Hello, Vaughn people. Uh, something a little different today. We have a bracket um, all about the different cage duos. This was something that was um, uh, put together by Romsom, but the idea originates from Hamburger Splash, and we're big fans of Splash Kiwi because if you recall, Kiwi's here by the yep. way. Kiwi. Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, he's me. back. Kiwi's back. All right. Um, and uh, Hamburger Splash, you know, winner of the Hot Take Tournament. Spoilers. I mean, but that was, what was that, like a May video? So you, you probably should have watched that by now. Um, Splash, I believe, according to the Discord, gave Romsom uh, 64 different uh, cage pairs. And uh, Romsom whittled it down to 32. So I'm, I'd be curious to see what the uh, the left out 32, because only only half of them survived to the bracket. Um, actually, you want to get some uh, music playing? Let me, uh, just so we're not sitting in silence here. Um, oh yeah, I actually got that ready. I have, I have the Days OST. I've been uh, working on my Days video, so I'm in the Days mindset. First of all, Kiwi, how have you been? Um, it's been, uh, tell the people what's been going on in the world of Kiwi. Uh, yeah, bro, we just chilling. We yeah. just chilling. <laughs> yeah, we just chilling. <laughs> uh, I got neighbors now. Like, other people oh. live in this, uh, so I'm not going to be able to scream as much as you <laughs> so, <laughs> that, that Yeah, that is a shame. Which, which may be a plus for some, but a plus for, for some, us. it's a minus for me. <laughs> it's for sure a minus. Um, there's, <laughs> for there, you and I, it's a big L. Yeah, <laughs> there are uh, several clips in the. Um, so I, I've already edited the uh, uh, 2022 highlights of Twitch, and there's a couple of clips of Kiwi just yelling um, <laughs> <laughs> sprinkled throughout that. So that'll be releasing on uh, the 14th. Um, it's oh already boy. all ready to go. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's. Uh, it's good to have you back on the channel. Let people know that we are, we're still friends. Like some people thought we have like broke up. Um, no, it's yeah, okay. no. no. I just we, explained uh, to anybody like, "Where's Kiwi?" I'm like, "He's fine. Like, he, like he's alive, and like, you know, he. I'm not. It's nice. He's not always in patty mode, right? Like, sometimes <laughs> you're in a patty mood, and he's not like the rest of you, where he can t tolerate me for 12 out of 12 months. And I, <laughs> I understand that. Like, that's just that's just how we roll. Um, I. Uh... Yeah, I don't know if I um, I don't know if I have the tolerance for anybody. It's not just you, fella. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like sometimes you just kind of gotta fuck off from everybody and just take it easy for a bit. I, I get it. Right. Um, so I literally <laughs> thought, thought that I lived in, in the dreams. dreams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. All right. I wanted to establish also uh, Yama Darken. Thank you for the follow there. I want to establish up top, and there was there was a little bit of rumbling about this on the community post and in, in the Discord. This is not going, it is an aromantic analysis of these pairs, okay? Um, I, I'm really, and for, for the record, I already solved shipping discourse. Like, we already finished that. I finished shipping discourse uh, in early January, so we shouldn't have to really um, analyze it anymore. I just feel like nothing good can come of it. You know what I mean? Like, what good could possibly come of uh, Barty's Pissed? Yeah, I, I just feel like it's, uh, you know, the, the uh, I'm doing risk assessment cost versus reward i i don't see the reward there so pack it in everyone nothing to see here it's entirely <laughs> aromantic um i mean listen there, there are a couple of pairs on here where I, i'm willing to discuss it but like when it's like you know the children characters um I, i'm not super invested in spending a ton of uh, brain power on that that's just how i've kind of operated um throughout my experience with the series but you know whatever i'm not trying to yuck anyone's yums you have their head cannons but that's, you uh, that's still haven't normal. dropped that. You still yeah. haven't dropped uh, no, yuck yeah. and yums. No, yuck and yums will, will stay forever. Um, yeah, Ew. I mean, and I... Yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll just do <laughs> the, the preface is that I tend to experience Kingdom Hearts as a story that's intrinsically about, like, super strong platonic friendship um, ahead of everything else. Um, I'm not saying there are no romantic undertones to anything, but that's what I'm more more interested in, um, I'll say, in terms of the, the character interactions. Um, so... I guess the other elephant in the room is that I feel like this is probably a coronation, uh, more so. I mean, I, I struggle to think... There's maybe, like, two real contenders here, and one of them is on the screen right now, and we'll talk through all of them, but um, I feel like I kind of know where it's going to go, but I guess the, the format we'll take is kind of the usual one. We'll, um, yeah, found family as well is, is a big uh, big theme. Um, Kiwi and I will talk about if we have a uh, disagreement, we'll, we'll put it to a poll. Um, I feel like we're probably going to agree on most of these just from, from glancing over it, but let's let's get into our, our first matchup here. Um, so, yeah, one, one of the, the big ones, obviously, Sora and Riku. 
uh, versus Zemnis and Ansem the Wise. Uh, what, what's your your knee jerk reaction? You just allowed. Let me uh, duck that a bit. What do you think, Kiwi? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it's Soren Riku should win. Yeah. Uh, not only because it's you know kind of the uh, the uh, the most main of the main characters, right. but also because. Uh, Zemnis and Ansem the Wise, I, I, I'm not, I'm not extremely inspired there. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not yeah. even uh, especially interesting competition. I mean, there's kind of like one scene, and then everything yeah. else is kind of. Well, I mean, otherwise, it's really uh, Apprentice Xehanort and Ansem the Wise. Yeah, I was gonna say there, so there's think... not a lot going on with those two. Yeah, I think if you lumped, like, Terranor and Xemnas into, like, you know, and they are basically, you know, the same person, um, there's a bit more of a, of a narrative through line there, you know, obviously Apprentice and Master, the, the wayward Apprentice, um, I mean, and it is a really good scene, like, the one scene that they do have where they're interacting in two, like, that's, you know, probably one of the best Cage 2 scenes, um, but obviously, you know, it's, it's not gonna stack up against, uh, Sora and Riku, which, um, I mean, I think that relationship sags a bit in 3, um, I think, you know, the main set piece for that relationship in 3 is probably the, uh, you don't believe that after the big scream in the graveyard. Um, right. Like, I don't even really know what the second, uh, biggest Sora and Riku scene in that game would be. Um, like, really, like, even thinking about, I guess, him, uh, coming to the rescue for the anti-aqua part. Um, yeah. even that is, like, there's not, like, a ton of interaction there. It's just, like, I'm here now. Um, or maybe, like, the first time they see each other, uh, like, in the <clears throat> tower or something yeah. like that pretty early in the game after Olympus there. Yeah. But there's so, really not a lot of uh, contenders in 3. Yeah. Uh, for, for second most interesting <laughs> Sora and yeah, Riku Yeah, scene, it's, but, uh, it's very much on the back burner. Um, yeah. I, I would assume that 4 will be uh, bigger for them as a duo. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, you would think, right? Because he's going to Quadratum, and that's you know that's where Sora is. Um, so right. I would think that we'll we'll see kind of more of the uh, evolution there. But he's um, making the most uh, direct attempt to save Sora yet. So, yeah, uh, that's true. Yes, yeah. you uh, you will most definitely uh, hear about each other from mm. each other. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, that's uh, pretty safely and soundly done. Um, yes. Next up, we have the 4-5, Roxas and Naminé versus Axel and Kyrie. And obviously, when it comes to, like, Axel, we'll lump Lee in for that. Um, I don't think either of these are particularly, like, obviously neither of them are as strong as uh, Sora and Riku. Um, right. I mean, Roxas and Naminé, I guess you're really going off of, uh, you know, the, the two prologue for that. Um... But after that, like, you're really not getting a, a ton from them, right? Like, uh, how often do well, they interact? Well, I really like, uh, I really like the scene, uh, at the end of 2, where, mm -hmm. uh... They it's rejoin. like, every time Sora and Kyrie are together, we'll be together, too. Oh, that's yeah. nice. I like, uh, I like that little, that little moment there. Yeah. They, uh, they, they have something beyond just the prologue, <laughs> which they don't really interact, uh... A whole lot there in those three hours but the times that they do are pretty interesting the whole uh um you know when they're in the white room and yeah and, and things like that uh pretty interesting uh yeah axel and Kyrie, do, do you have anything to add to uh, Roxas and well for roxas and nominee i guess um <clears throat> well what you were saying like i do love that that scene in cage too but i feel like um i feel like it doesn't age that well right because like they're, and I, I think they knew at the time that eventually, like, if I had to guess, I, I would think that Nomura had plans for Roxas and Nominate to eventually have their own autonomy, even by the end of 2. Um, but, you know, when you, when you really kind of end on the note that, you know, these two characters are part of two other characters, and as long as those characters are together, then they will be too. Um, I mean, that's not, you know, really true anymore. Um, if, right. Sora and, if Sora and Kyrie are together now, that means nothing for Roxas and Naminé. So, like, that message has kind of withered. And, you know, for the best, I'd rather them have their own autonomy and, and be, you know, their own independent agents um, and instead of, like, just being confined to their, their somebody versions. But I feel like if, uh, I don't know, do you lose something nowadays? Like, in the in the post-Roxas and Naminé um, being alive, uh, you know, Cage 3 ending? Like, is that not as strong anymore? Like, I, I feel like it's not, but it maybe it doesn't matter for the, the relationship. Well, yeah, I think, though, like, a lot of things uh, from uh, one in Chain of Memories and two are, <laughs> are a little less uh, 
sure. strong in the post dream drop distance era so yeah. uh i don't think that this is especially unique i just kind of have to look at the uh the moments in a vacuum and that one in a vacuum is uh is quite strong in my opinion. Yeah. I, I think it's a, a fun little moment. Though, yes, it is one of those things that's kind of been not, well, as you said, hasn't aged especially well uh, during that time. Uh, uh, Barty I really says, care about Axel and Kyrie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Barty says, I, I disagree with the sentiment that a resolution takes away from the emotional impact of what happened when the characters had limited information available to them. No, I agree. I'm not saying, like, because obviously they didn't know that, that, that eventually things were going to were gonna pan out and everyone would be, you know, happy on the beach in, um, you know, I guess a year's time from their perspective. Um, I just feel like for me, when I'm replaying it, like, it's not going to hit as hard anymore. Um, and that's just for me. Like, I, I feel like to a first-time player who doesn't know what happens in three, that that moment's still going to mean something. Um, but I, I just feel like uh, you know, I'm not as emotionally invested in the Roxas and Namine relationship when soaring. Like the whole the whole anchor, I feel like, is soaring Kyrie. And I guess we should get we should get into before we even move on to Axel and Kyrie is like is Roxas and Namine like what is the differentiating factor between them and Sora and Kyrie? Um, I guess it's just kind of more tragic than Sora and Kyrie. Um, yeah. Like, I yeah. don't know. Like, I, I, like they don't really uh, interact a ton. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, they're going to advance for me over Axel and Kyrie because I, I feel like that's kind of just... Uh, uh, it's kind of a weird one. Like, it goes from a uh, kidnapper to confidant, you know? I uh, Right. You know, he spends most of two um, kind of antagonizing her in a way. And then their their training partners in in three um you know they're in the party in the graveyard but i don't know axel sees shion and Kyrie. she was basically a vehicle for him to kind of uh you know have flashbacks to shion in three that's how i felt at least well i guess uh <laughs> we kind of miss a lot of the the interesting axel and Kyrie development right because we go from Kyrie's like afraid to go hang out with him in uh in the uh 2.8 ending in the the tower there you know when they're say you're gonna go train with with axel yeah and she's like oh oh i don't like that at all <laughs> and then the next time we see those characters they're like buds so yeah. like we we miss all of <clears throat> the most interesting axel and Kyrie scenes right i feel like we don't miss all of the most interesting roxas and nominee yeah. scenes like all of their history together we've kind of uh we've kind of seen uh yeah that's and, a good point. and we miss all of the most fun stuff about the other ones so for me it, it's roxas and nominee for that reason yeah for sure um yeah like barnabas said it goes from kidnapper to confidant but not with an arc it just switches from them not speaking uh, it switches after them not speaking for several games yeah like kiwi said um you know it's like the cameras weren't rolling for the uh the most important axel and Kyrie moments and that's like uh behind the scenes dvd extra um yeah. and barty said earlier um yeah no nothing's gonna hit as hard on a replay but i mean i i feel like if i'm if i play cage 2 in 2006 and then i play it again in 2007 like the roxas and nomine rejoining scene is gonna hit harder even in 2000 uh 18 than it does you know after i, I finish three that, that's the only point i was trying to make um, I do think the the moment is a little diluted after that, but that's, you know, agree to disagree on that. That's fine. Um, okay, moving on to Ericus and Xehanort versus Riku, Replica, and Namine. Um, mm. well, it's pretty easy for me, but I, I just want to ask you, Kiwi, um, when I say the word, the phrase, the lost trio, does that mean anything to you? I'm curious. <laughs> Uh, no, not really. Okay. No. So if I if I told you that there was in the fandom, so you know, like you have the main three trios, um, yeah. Um, but there's a, a secret fourth trio called the Lost Trio. Um, I think you can probably guess uh, two of them. But who do you think is is in that group? Um, this is entirely. Uh, I, I was just curious because it's uh, it's very stupid. I think well, <laughs> I think it's really dumb. Two of the three must be Riku Replica right. nominated. Yeah. Right. So who's the third member? <clears throat> she on? Nope, because she's already part of a, a different. Yeah, one. right. She's already. I don't know if you could be in two. No, uh, you can only be in one. <laughs> there's, there's a uh, limit. I, I don't. Venetus, of course. Sure. <laughs> Venetus. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I right. think it's so stupid. People like are like, what about the Lost Trio? They none like all three of them have never been on the same screen. 
Um, it's awful. Stop trying to make yeah. it a thing. It's not a thing. Where did that? Uh, where did that come from? Where did that uh, sprout? Literally, I, someone's ass. Or yeah, no, yeah, it came out of someone's rectum. It was literally just like a post to BBS era. Like it's the Lost Trio. Like it's entirely a uh, fan-made thing. But people, I think some people like take it serious. Like they think like there's any real connection there. It's um, a rectum-derived trio. I guess because they echo Sora, Riku, and Kairi. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, that's that's more. Um, that's more credit that I was giving it uh, than two minutes ago. Um, right, Vanitas is the anti-Sora, Riku Replica is the anti-Riku, Namine is the anti kairi But, like, they don't interact. It's just, like, you know, it's like a parallel. Um, okay. Anyway, <laughs> um, for me, it's Ericus and Xehanort. Um, I mean, I'm not uh, super compelled by their relationship, if I'm being honest. Like, I, I do think, um, you know, for, for what it's worth, it's probably most interesting in Dark Road. Um, yeah, but uh, Rika Replica and Namine, like they really don't have a ton uh, to do with each other. I mean, um, even in Recon, where both of them are prominently featured, uh, I can't. I can't even think of like you know, like there's a scene where like she breaks his brain after uh, like after he fights Sora for some reason. Frustratingly, um, I don't even know what you make of Namine and Rika Replica. Like, there's really no defining aspect of that relationship. I don't think. Maybe I'm missing something. I, uh, I, I am a little, <clears throat> uh, I'm a little surprised that uh, it, you're down on Riku Replica and Nominee. I, I actually oh, okay. think that I would advance them. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> I okay. think I would actually pick Riku Replica and Nominee. I think uh, first because uh, Ericus and Xehanort, I, I mean, okay, that like it, it, there's a lot of implied <clears throat> history and then right. dark road put imagery to it all uh i think i i think i'm struggling a little bit with the uh the phone game aspect of it right yeah like, yeah sure i mean i will that, too yeah that's kind of hard to to uh uh immediately get behind uh the rika replica though is so Hopelessly and uh, so devoted to, mm. to nominate. It's it's. We're back. Sorry about that, folks. I had like a hard <laughs> crash there. Uh, both my screens went black, and then OBS uh, failed. So, um, sorry about that. We should be good now. Um, yeah, I uh, I feel like we were in the uh, middle of the Rika replica and nominate. I, I guess the, uh, to my point is, and I I agree. I, I really kind of undersold the uh, devotion to nominate, but I feel like it's like not a two way street. Like I feel like I'm more invested in in this pairing where the two uh, members of it kind of have. Like I don't feel like nominate really has an opinion on Rika Replica, let alone mm -hmm. like devotion or or feelings in any way for him. Um, right. So that that's where I'm coming from. Is that like I feel like it's and it's an entirely one way thing, whereas Ericus and Zane were kind of bounce off of each other. Rika Replica you know, tries to, but Naminé is, is not a good improv partner. She does not yes and him. She says no, and then the, the scene ends. That's that's how I feel. But uh, I'm willing I'm willing to hear, you know, evidence to the contrary because, you know, I'm not uh I'm not like an encyclopedia of uh, Rika Replica and Naminé moments, so Rika yeah, so Replica is kind of like uh, an image of, of what Sora could have been if he was just broken just a little bit more like hmm. when he has that freak out scene on on D and G and he leaves them behind and he yells at them and everything like Rika Replica yeah. is just like the the embodiment of of that <clears throat> energy and it's all right. about her it's yeah it's it's got some uh, stalker energy to it really. yeah a little, little uh, bit but like she made him that way it, so it's weird you know like uh, right I mean she had to she was forced to program his brain to be like that but uh yeah it is it's kind of bizarre um I well, uh, I don't have a, a ton of beef if it uh, ends up being Nort plus hmm. <laughs> Eric is, yeah but, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah the poll is running right now for anyone unaware. <clears throat> Just wanted to uh, to share a few thoughts on Riku Replica yeah. and Amine. If nothing else, we. Uh... <laughs> I mean, I'd put them above Axel and Kyrie if they were in the the next round. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's that. Like, I think they probably deserved a higher seed than Axel and Kyrie. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I know a lot. Of, I guess let's. We didn't really talk that much about Erika and Xehanort, but I do. I know it's kind of a controversial scene, um, more so from people who just like didn't like Cage Three. I feel. 
But, um, like, I, I like the Ericus and Xehanort scene at the end of 3. Um, I think you and I, and really you, kind of uh, changed my mind on this back around when the game released, but, um, you know, Ericus forgives Xehanort, um, but, like, the rest of the characters don't, and the, and the universe... Um, doesn't really forgive him for his actions. I, I mean, I guess it kind of does, because he gets to, you know, not, like, be in Kingdom Hearts Hell or whatever. But I feel like, right. you know, we don't know how the uh, the afterlife of KH works outside of the, the final world, and that's that's more of a purgatory. Um, for yeah. all we know, everyone goes to the same place regardless of your morals in Kingdom Hearts. Like, that's just, you know, how, how it works. Um, I mean, I'm more invested in, like, the, uh, the portion of the scene where Xehanort and Sora are talking, as opposed to Ericus and Xehanort, but... Um, I don't know. I think Dark Road gives it a bit of juice. Um, uh, you know, I'm not the hugest Dark Road stand, but I did watch all the scenes, and uh, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm more invested in, in them than uh, a, a duo that I feel like we're not gonna even get anything else from. I mean, we're not gonna get any more Erica or Zayno content anymore either. I would hope, um, but I don't know. I feel like I have a bigger body of work for Erica and Zayno, and I'm. Um, it looks like the uh, chat agrees on that, so. We will. Isn't it, uh, oh, sorry. I just have one more thing. Uh, yeah. Isn't it fun how, like, even after all that time passed, like after Chain of Memories, like in Cage Three, like Riku Replica is still trying to save Nominee to help Nominee. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, he, he takes the the uh, <clears throat> puppet and all of that, and the uh, you know, that's yeah. still his only. Uh, it's true. Driving point. It's interesting. Yeah, it, but, yeah, it is yeah, interesting I'm fine because with, uh, with Norton and Eric, his, so that's fine. Yeah, and his last moment at the end of um, Riku's story in uh, in Recom, um, I feel like he's kind of uh, shirked the entire nominee thing, and he's more you know existential and uh, self reflective. Like he's really not talking about her at all um, on the Riku side of things. Um, but then you know maybe when he dies, his brain gets reset to when he was created. <laughs> And he right. goes back to nominee mode. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, yeah. Okay, um, we got Terran Aqua versus uh, Ventus and Chirithi. Um, no, I, I'm long on the record that uh, I think the Wayfinder trio has the uh, the weakest relationships. I feel like that's kind of the uh, conventional what stock opinion. Um, but uh, even even Terran Aqua, I think I have to advance over Ven and Chirithi, which I, I feel nothing for. Not that I feel a ton for Terran Aqua either. Um, you know, I feel like. They, I mean, they get some decent moments, like, of the three moments that everyone gets together in BBS, like, they're not bad. Um, you know, you get Terranaqua in Castle of Dreams, you get the whole, uh, you know, verbal altercation, I guess, in uh, Radiant Garden after Trinity Armor. Um, you get uh, the moment when he gets brought back in 3, like, I feel like those are probably the big three Terranaqua moments. Right. Um, Sea Salt have the worst trio relationship? I don't think so. What do you think, Kiwi? Let's go. Let's talk about trios for just a second. Uh, yeah, no, I, I would probably say that. <laughs> I mean, at least comparing the Wayfinder trio and the Sea Salt ones, I think the Sea Salt trio is, is stronger. Yeah. Uh, um, two things I want to say about Terran Aqua. Sure. Uh, I really like their scene in the Keyblade graveyard. You never stop lighting my way back and all of that, mm. and then. Tears are shed. It's, yeah, it's, it's a great scene. It. It's a great scene. I love that. Loved it in the moment. Uh, it was like the closest pre-ending montage that I got to tears probably in that game. I just yeah. love the scene. Love yeah, the it's scene. very good. I, it. It's it's my favorite of the, uh, um, you know, I, like, I, I feel like I like that more than even Roxas coming back. And I tend to favor Roxas as a character and his relationships more than the Wayfinders. But it, it is so, so strong. Um, sorry, uh, Barnabas asked me a question. If Terra and Aqua got put on the in the buzzsaw trap from Until Dawn and Ben had to save one of them, how many seconds do you think it'd take for him to pick Terra? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, zero. It, it would be immediate. Uh, yep. The Ven Terra relationship, I don't know if that's going to show up, but I feel like that's stronger than the uh, um, Aqua Terra. But that's just me. Um, I like the Lost trio more than both of those trios, yeah. by the way. <laughs> should, I, should I skip Halloween Town? Um, I guess I will. Just in case <laughs> Danny Elfman gets mad at me. Um, um, okay, but my other thing about Terran Aqua, though. They, uh, they're, they're kind of an interesting dynamic because they're kind of uh, two sides of the same coin and that they were both kind of raised the same way and yeah. very uh, dogmatic. Uh, environment and everything, but Terra actually had to 
you know, face the alternative, and Aqua never did. So to kind of see their tension grow yeah. from that is kind of is kind of always been very interesting to me. It's kind of the driver behind why I'm such a Terra fan is that yeah. he actually has to struggle with like the thing that he's been taught his entire life. Yeah, no. Aqua never does. That's why I've generally been down on on Aqua compared to where other people are. Uh, she's such a <clears throat> she's such a normie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, you know, in in that sense, it, it makes the relationship stronger to me mm -hmm. because she's such a normie. He would be a normie, but he's kind of getting nudged out of it. And to see how it uh, it uh, it's kind of fought between them is, is interesting to me. Yeah, that's a good point about um, Terra kind of having to work against, like, conditioning and, um, you know, basically a lifetime. Like, I think that's a good point in favor of the argument against him just being, like, a watered-down Riku. Which I think to a degree, like, obviously the Wayfinders are, you know, shadows of the, the Destiny trio. But I do think that, like, Terra and Riku have a different journey. Um, you know, obviously both of them are involved in, in the forces of darkness kind of uh, tainting their their direction and their thoughts but like i feel like terra like riku doesn't have like a history really like he's just a kid at the start of cage one obviously like he he met terra and he you know he knew, knew about the keyhole and other worlds and everything but like it wasn't like the same level of like you know going to keyblade school for and learning about you know the forces of light and how good all that is for 18 years or whatever um so Ben and Cherry, anything, anything to talk about with that? I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> really quick, I yeah. would push back a little bit on that. Like Aqua has to to struggle with what she's been taught and birth by sleep. But I think uh, she's she's really kind of just like piling on when they meet each other at the Keyblade graveyard, and yeah. and Eric kind of you know soft apologizes for killing ericus and yeah and she just like cannot understand yeah. like what happened like yeah she doesn't care about like the context of why that happened she doesn't right. care about like the nuance of the situation and she goes like right into just hammering it yeah and it's uh you know kind of she had more to grow than i think people uh than people talk about uh she doesn't really get challenged until like people are saying in uh 0 0.2 in 0 0.2 and yeah. in kh3 that's where the real struggle kind of comes in for her and that's when she kind of improves as a character for me yeah. uh ventus and charity i have very little to say I yeah mean, like I, I don't know i i like their little reunion at the end but it does right I, I mean i if it didn't happen nothing in my life would be different so yeah, no. it's no ash and uh, pikachu yeah. certainly yeah. Um, they do, I mean, it's it's a Union Cross thing, you know, and uh, PJ was mad that this was the only, like, uh, piece of Union Cross representation on here, but, um, you know, I think Rom knew his audience and that it was going to be me and Kiwi talking through these, and <laughs> even if this, this was chock full of Union Cross stuff, like, I, I can't imagine that I'm going to advance uh, a bunch of them over the mainline stuff. Um, no, I mean, yeah, the, the scene where they reunite in 3 is obviously very cute, but I can't really track, like, an arc or a... Uh, you know, moments with them in the same way that I can with Terran Aqua, at least. Just, I just want to say, hearing you talk about Terran Aqua made me, like, just wish that there were, like, maybe two or three more scenes with all of them together in BBS. Just, like, right. two or three more. Like, could you imagine what good that would have done for a game that I already really like? But, um, yeah. it would have just been so much, um, I think more respected in the community. Like, just by having literally three one or two minute cutscenes spread out more across the game where they're all interacting even flashbacks like it's just uh, such a shame um yeah, they Aqua all needed more. more time together to to question each other and, and yeah. things like that but yeah i think they're a, they're an easy move on there <laughs> yes um I, I know i said that we weren't going to talk about this in uh <laughs> in in the romantic sense but zaldan and beast are here uh versus <laughs> sorry and Kyrie. <laughs> oh you uh, just could not <laughs> wait to say that yeah you, yeah <laughs> We got Zal Beast. Um, <laughs> I will say that, uh, you know, I, I played through two on stream. We make jokes about Zaldan and Beast uh, and how you know, how their, uh, Zaldan is obsessed with him, and it's kind of weird. And then, you know, everyone's like, oh, play. And you talk about how boring Zaldan is and how like, that's the only thing, that he's strong and that he is very invested in, in the Beast of it all. 
but then everyone's like, play Days. Like, Zaldin gets fleshed out, and it makes it makes more sense. And then I play Days, and I'm like, no, this is fucking weird. Like, he's so... He got, like, laser-focused on this one guy. And, like, I get it. Like, I understand the the motivation is that uh, we gotta turn this guy into a, a heartless to get his heart for Kingdom Hearts, and he's gonna make a strong nobody. But, like, really? Like, we're investing so many resources and so much time into just tormenting the beast. Like, it's one guy. Um, Rom's gonna explain. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to see this. Yeah. Uh, um, obviously, we're going to advance Sora and Kairi. Um, I don't even know if it warrants discussion in terms of, like, their big moments until we kind of get later into the bracket where it might, you know, have to go up against something even nearly as strong. It's a passion project. Yeah, yeah that's like Zaldin's Wayfinder project. Is like, I'm not making money from this, but uh, it's I'm really interested in, in making this a thing, so. Yeah, Zaldin yeah. knows that Beast was able to swim through goddamn space, and he wants to know how. <laughs> yeah. I like that more. It's, uh, it's a weird, <laughs> it's a weird thing that that of all the characters, like that's the one that Zaldin's like. There could have just been like even a, a comment made about how he uh, he goes after uh, like multiple Disney characters, but the one that we just happened to follow is is the Beast. But no, yeah. like that's the only Disney character. Right. That he's interested like, in. wouldn't it have been Is great if in days he was. Yeah, if, if he was in days, if he was, like, you know, really investigating, like, Captain Hook as well, or, like, uh, you know, um, even Aladdin or something. Like, just, like, really fucking with the Disney characters, trying to, like, recruit new members or, or make strong Heartless. But it's, like, no. All in on Beast. Um, well, sorry. Beast is a little bit more vulnerable than some yeah. of those other ones. Is a That's little true. bit more ripe for that kind of thing. But still, like, it, it yeah. is a little bit like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. there's other disney characters who are kind of struggling with their identity and yeah. stuff like that i mean that's a, a weird place to go all the time you yeah know? i would have loved to have seen zaldin try to like manipulate genie because i feel like genie would be a strong uh heartless and nobody he's, he's all powerful yeah. you know um, i don't know yeah. what insecurities you poke out with genie to really drive a wedge but would have been interesting um so we'll advance Soaring Kyrie again. I think we can talk about the moments later. Um, I feel like we can kind of uh, couch that for now. Um, Teenage romance versus gay slow burn between rugged man and tortured prince. Is this a chat that you're reading? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, I see yes. from Fruit Soon. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah, honestly, That's Rom, why don't you should have put like Zaldan and Beast against like Ven and Chirithi. I totally, I, I ob absolutely, unironically would have advanced Zaldan and Beast over Ven and Chirithi. Same. So, um, yeah. All right, we'll talk about Soren Kari more later. <laughs> um, we got uh, Terra and Xehanor versus Larxene and Marluxia. Um, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, um, this is interesting. I mean, my I like gut it. says Terra and Xehanor. I feel boring because I've gone the higher seed every time so far. But, um, you know, Larxene and Marluxia, I feel like uh, you could swap either of them out for any other given member of the organization besides, like, Axel. And I feel like uh, not much changes, really. Like, I don't think there's anything unique about Larxene and Marluxia's relationship that um, necessitates it being those two characters who are the traitors. Like, they're both kind of conniving and manipulative, I guess. Okay, wait, wait, before, yeah, before we comment on I this, yep. <laughs> we, have, we have an essay from Rom. Also, um, uh, Alf, Alfino uh, LV, thank you for the five months there. Um, Rom says, Zaldin's whole shtick is that he became a nobody in order to avoid emotions, presumably some sort of heartbreak. I guess you're right. You're, you're right. I mean, I feel like that's a little bit of extrapolation from, like, how he talks about love in Days, but I do know what you're talking about. Like, Ven, or sorry, Roxas is, like, learning about love in that mission, and, uh, Zaldin's like, it's, it's useless, you don't need it. Um, he seems, like, really down on love as an emotion, especially. Um, unlike the rest of the Orc who talk about how much they want a heart, Zaldan actively dismisses having a heart. He hates the concept of love because he was unable to experience it because Alias gave him the cold shoulder. Um, why isn't that a duo on here? Um, when he, um, when he sees a literal beast, creepy buffalo monster, experiencing love, the thing that he is unable to experience, it bothers them and he becomes obsessed with it, trying, or he becomes obsessed with trying to ruin it. Um... That's a pretty good. I think that's probably the best Zaldin character reading I've ever seen, actually. Yeah, probably. Um, that's actually really good. Um, so he's still second from the bottom in terms of organization, but um, he's you know <laughs> even with that reading, he's yeah. still second worst. I mean, in truth, he's probably better than Demix. Maybe with that, I mean, that was a really good explanation. I really like that. 
Um, I don't know if that was not in the hot takeoff. It should have been Rom, and if it was, and I didn't uh, take it, I'm sorry. Um, Ruthie, thank you for the 24 months, two years. Oh my God, that's right. This is the two year anniversary coming up. Um, look at that for, of the channel. Um, wow. You and this community have brought a lot of joy in my life. I'm so glad to have made a decision to watch your videos out of a random suggestion to quote Cinderella. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything. Yeah, you're welcome, Ruthie. A wonderful dream. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Appreciate that so much, Ruthie. Um, was it in there, Rom? I'm so sorry. There were like, there, in fairness, there were like three or four other Zaldan takes, and I feel like uh, we kind of got, kind of got overwhelmed by it all. Um, okay, sorry. Terran Xehanort versus Larxene and Marluxia. Also, Carly, I'm sorry. I don't know how to get rid of this bottom bar. Um, if there's a way, let me know. I don't, I don't know. Um, I was uh, complaining about Larxene and Marluxia. Um, do you have any thoughts on them? Uh, I, I like them. Uh, I like them too. Like, I like the vibe. I just don't know how deep it is. Not that any of these are like fucking Mariana Trench, but. Well, one thing, uh, they have the common thread of being, uh, of being ancient. You yeah, know? that's true. They're very old. Uh, so they have that going on. Uh, the, um, the whole traitor situation is kind of just circumstance. And again, I think kind of like with, uh, Kyrie and Axel, the most interesting Lark scene and Marluxia scenes happen off screen, right? Like, mm. I kind of want to know them, uh, kind of feeling each other out beforehand. Yeah. Like, so you also think they're assholes and Jinx, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you owe me a bucket a, of Namura fried chicken, exactly. Right, right. So they kind of have uh, uh, a moment that happens of, like, both realizing that they're not really interested in this, uh, but we, we never quite see that. I, I like the implication, but, uh, yeah, I guess um, I guess we, we don't really see that. Terra and Xehanort, we have a lot of material yeah. on, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that one, I feel like, needs to win I agree. here. Because uh, um, it's kind of the uh, the driving point for for everything that happens, you know. Yeah, if at least in the modern chronologically, right? And yeah. like the you know past ten, eleven years of the Kingdom Hearts timeline, like that really is the catalyst of it all. Um, right. I just wanted to put a, a pin in the, uh, or rather go back to the Lark scene and Marluxia real quick, is that uh, I, I super agree that um, I think the most interesting moments of those two are kind of prologue that we don't get, uh, that we're not privy to. Um, I, I tend to, and we've talked about this a couple of times the past few streams, about like the, the iceberg idea of like leaving some of that underneath and not like ruining the mystery of everything. We, I always go back to like the example of like not showing young Yen Sid, like just letting us imagine what that was like in terms of his uh, Keyblade training. Um, right. But like when it comes to something like Larxene and Marluxia, where it is such a, a driving point in uh, Recom and that they have this history in Union Cross, like it really would have been cool to see them, um, like you said, to get on the same page with each other. Um, but yeah, Terran Xehanort, like you said, it's it's the catalyst. Um, and what is what is the Star Wars parallel? Like what? Who is each character? Like Terra's the Anakin and Xehanort's uh. the Emperor. Is that how it works? That's correct, yes. Okay, yeah. Um, so obviously a lot of people have, have noticed, uh, you know, Nomura is uh, famously, maybe not famously, but uh, on, on the record as being a Star Wars appreciator. So I'm sure there was a degree of intentionality there, obviously, you know, casting Mark Hamill. So do you, I mean, is it a, here, here's a question. Is it a weaker uh, uh, relationship than Anakin and the Emperor? Because I haven't seen any of the uh, the prequels, so I wouldn't know. Oh uh, boy, this is, uh, this is kind of tough. Uh, because... Well, just for Star Wars purposes, it's tough because, like, I, I think the the prequels are like the most underrated and, and overrated right. <laughs> movies yes. ever. So it's always kind of difficult to <laughs> approach those. But yeah. uh, I think um, I think that uh, Terra and Xehanort is weaker than yeah. the Star Wars relationship because uh, Terra. I don't know if he ever meets Xehanort really uh, and like speaks to him uh, before Birth by Sleep. You know, they they maybe yeah. like cross paths, like maybe he saw them. But well, I guess uh, the one moment we know of is when Ven is delivered to Land of Departure. That's what flashback. I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah, that's the only other thing I think of. Now with Palpatine and, and Anakin, there was a a really uh, insidious kind of uh, I, I I don't know what word to use mm -hmm. here but like there was a uh just going for it like there was a little bit of a grooming process from when he was like very young to right. kind of be 
like his guy someday yeah. you know uh i yeah so i <laughs> that was like I'm the just only word that i yeah no you're good i mean uh, i i don't think that's inaccurate um no i just mean my my term there yeah sure not, was like ideal, yeah yeah, yeah. But, you, no you're good <laughs> but you know what i'm saying though yeah. that like it was a lot more of like a deliberate plan the entire time right to have anakin kind of be the the guy the, yeah like the xanor Aaron and Taryn Xanor kind of just like came out right I was gonna uh, ask nowhere do you think he like landed on that like earlier to when he delivered Ven or I mean maybe it's actually spoken of in one of the Xanor reports in BBS um like when he kind of uh, came around to that being the uh the vessel plan um oh really quick sorry I missed a couple of things uh Van thank you for gifting a sub to da -da -da -da. Um, Ace M uh, uh, sorry, Ace MCF ninety seven. That is Van seventh and Frosty. We have the sub to Homestuck official. That is four hundred and forty four total. Thank you so much, Frosty and Shredgun. Thank you for the follow. Missed a lot of stuff right there. Um, yeah, I know. I uh, again, as somebody who's not familiar with the uh, the prequels, I had a feeling that they would have went out over Terran Xehanort in terms of the uh, relationship there. Um, yep. you know what the best Terran Xehanort moment is? It's when they're both not. Uh, alive, and they're both speaking to each other from within Terranort. Um, You're I think gonna that's get the shown the door, old man. Yeah, I love that. That's my favorite. Yeah. Uh, not that there's like a ton. I, I mean, I guess uh, there's a couple of you know manipulation scenes where Xehanort gets in his ear either in Land of Departure or um, the Keyblade Graveyard when he calls him there. Um, but I do think that's like uh, I think that's in Blank Points, right? That's when that happens. Yes. Yes. Um, so yeah, we'll advance that. I feel like we spent a lot of time on those two. Um, sure. Probably more than we need to, but Donald and Goofy versus Soren Roxas. Very interesting because uh, Donald and Goofy seated higher, um, and they're you know obviously Disney characters, and you got Soren Roxas, who are two of the most main characters. Um, I, I feel like a lot of people making the bracket might swap those seatings, um, but I don't know if I would. I feel like I maybe I agree with this. Um, uh, I think same. Because like. Sora and Roxas, like, it's crazy. Like, they're the same guy, you know, to a degree, obviously. But um, there's not a ton of um, material to work with there, you know? Um, like, I feel like their biggest moment is, uh, again, the end of 2, right? Like, that same scene we talked about with Roxas and Nomine. Um Yeah, yeah, probably, right? End of Coded, I mean, but that's not or... the real guys. Those are the stupid data versions. And, like, the dream drop distance kind of uh tripping balls scene where Sora like yeah. changes his uh his outfit like mid scene and everything and there's, yeah 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 you know what i'm talking about yeah. right what is going on and he's like running yeah, in slow motion that's yeah. the one yeah, yeah. uh now d and g if we <clears throat> talk about them for a yeah. moment uh they uh like name a scene besides uh besides like goofy's death very briefly mm -hmm. where they aren't in the same frame like they yeah. are like they're the quintessential most iconic duo I'm yeah like, fuck, they... yeah i mean if we're going by screen time right like uh i don't think anybody comes even close to the amount of time that they spend uh, in the same right. shot um let yeah. me just scroll back up and like who would the next probably sore and riku um yeah definitely sore and riku but even them they're not coming close because you know Every single world you go to with Sora, you're go yeah, got Donald and Goofy in tow as well. Um, right. Yeah, let's let's it let's discuss. Buffoon brought up <laughs> the uh the unspoken history, more iceberg stuff, more stuff kept underneath the surface. We have what uh, TV tropes would call the noodle moment when uh, Donald uh, is crying over Goofy's dead body and says, "I'm sorry about the ice cream." Like that's like <laughs> that's like an event uh, yeah. that happened in the past that we don't know about that happened right. off screen. Which I, I love. Like, what is the implication there? Um, that like Donald like stole Goofy's ice cream or or something like that. And then the uh, the implication that maybe Goofy knows the consequences of a Zeta flare or that Donald has done it before. Or, and he says, Donald, don't. Um, in Cage 3. Is this squish? Um, yeah. I love that. I, uh, I love moments like that when they, uh, when they say or they, they reference moments that, like, are, that's the first time we've ever right. it's heard of off -screen. that. Like, so a famous example of that to go back to Star Wars is in, uh, is in A New Hope in the first. Hmm. Star Wars. There's a, a reference to the Clone Wars, which oh, interesting. like everybody was like, "What the 
fuck is that? Yeah, like, that <laughs> yeah. means nothing to me. But and like, like it's oh, flushed that's out. Cool. Yeah. Right. And now, so when like, are they gonna flush out the ice cream? To touch that, <laughs> yeah. But even like, even without touching it, they still like threw it out there, and, and that's kind of fun. I like yeah. when they show that there's a bigger world out there than just like what we've seen. Uh, yeah. Even though I've kind of lightly dunked on that type of thing, generally I do like when there's just kind of that implied stuff that uh, that happens, and again, the world yeah. is bigger than than what we see. Right. Um, yeah, that's all very good. Um, uh, Lily Lychee said, let me pull this, let me scroll back up. Um, we don't know much of Donald and Goofy's relationship deeper than, yeah, they're bros and work together. Um, true, but also, like, Sora and Roxas, like, we don't really know much about their relationship besides the fact that they're the same guy. I mean, if, uh, if Kyrie and Naminé were in the three spot where Donald and Goofy are, I'd probably advance them over Sora and Roxas. I feel like there's more to go off of there, just based on their interactions at the end of two. Um, they're brothers, only closer. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just think, uh, like, I like Storm Roxas. Like, I, I really don't feel anything for that. Like, I like both of them on their own, but like as a duo, like they're not really. They're more of a of a one for most of the uh, most of the series, you know. Well, I mean, about the. Uh... About Donald and Goofy, we don't know much about their relationship other than that they're co-workers. Like, okay, at least they have a relationship, though, right? Like, yeah. Sora and Roxas really, really don't have very much of a relationship at all. Yeah. Uh, I'd take a, like, pretty basic relationship over not one, or one that doesn't really exist. Uh, right. <laughs> interesting yeah, and, phrasing there with existing right, the process right. in the picture but yeah. and you know when i uh when i advertised the stream I, I think i said like we're gonna be talking about these relationships from a writing and character perspective but in a follow-up comment i said i also threw in the word like entertainment perspective and um i don't think we can really sleep on that when it comes to you know judging like wh who's most fun to watch you know like as as someone experiencing the media like which which of these am i more kind of um invested or, or interested in or just like having fun watching and like you know uh i think there's just a bigger body of work and even though it's not maybe technically deeper than the sword and rocks relationship um there's a lot of fun doll and goofy moments um also maybe is there is it maybe a toxic relationship because donald casts thunder on him in the gardens and goofy just kind of goes along with it is, is there abuse yep. happening yep of yeah. course yep well, I think that adds a ton of depth. So I think we're, we're are we in agreement that we advanced Donald and Goofy? Uh, yeah. One more thing on the co-working yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I had like my epiphany about days, and I was like, it was right around the time where I started like you know, being a working person every yeah. day and stuff like right. that, and I started to appreciate the grind that it yeah. was showing. Yeah. That Donald and Goofy could still stand each other after being co-workers <laughs> for yeah. eighty decades. years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Love that for them. Yeah, that's good. Like, that's really good for them. Win. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Chai is probably most upset about this one so far. I feel like I'm seeing more um, more distaste for this decision. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know. I, I agree with the seating here. Um, there's just more Donald and Goofy stuff. And again, quantity does not necessarily mean that it's going to be better. But I just... Soren Rox is just not giving me enough. So, um, All right. Oof. Donald and Goofy. Next up, Sora and Goofy. That's interesting. And Aqua and Ventus. Um, wow. <laughs> so we're we're taking Donald out of the equation. Like obviously, we we know you know it's it's weird to say SG instead of SDG. Like it's I'm, I'm assuming Sora and Donald show up uh, later on down here. But uh, Sora and Goofy on their own. Um, what's the biggest Sora and Goofy moment? Like Donald's gonna be you. in the background. Go ahead. I know it. I know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> It immediately comes to mind that during the uh, the my friends are my power scene that Goofy jumps right in front Ooh, of that, that yeah. death shot. Yeah, that is the Sora and Goofy moment. Right. He there. defects from Riku first. Yes. So do you think Sora? Right. I mean, Sora secretly he's like, "You guys are my best friends," but like Goofy's a little higher than Donald. Yeah, right. it's like the Scarecrow thing from yeah. Wizard of Oz. I think yeah. I'm going to pursue most of all. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, excuse me? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that's a good point. Um, can you think of maybe the number two incident after that? Like, do we have, like, two moments even? Uh, I'm not down on this for well, the record. I'm just, I'm curious uh, to, to explore go it. Back to, the, uh, to go back to the, um, 
Oh, I just got a a, a Purina ad. Over, oh, so, <laughs> over, sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, um, no, I think uh, maybe. Oh wait, should we wait for the um, people to come back? Or I mean, the ad is going to run regardless. Uh, oh, so okay. it's set at intervals. Just continue. That, to that's go. to encourage people to subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, number two, I mean, I think maybe you'd want to return to the goofy death scene. I think mm -hmm. the whole, like, this is not happening. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> like, that's so... Hard. Would Sora have reacted Jesus. the same if it was Donald? <laughs> you know, no, I would like, think... Oh, dude, that really sucks. That oh, sucks no. so bad. <laughs> that sucks. That's going to put a damper on my Saturday. Wow. Dude, yeah. My day is ruined. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was my ride too, so this like I'm gonna have to like get an Uber. This sucks. He drives the gummy ship, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. Um, right. So, uh, so there's soaring Goofy, uh, Aqua and Ven. Um, well, I, obviously, I think the core of that is is gonna be in BBS. Like, you, actually, you get a little bit of it in Zero Point Two with uh, him in the casket. This should help. Um, and obviously in Three when when she wakes him up. Um, mm -hmm. Daisy, thank you for gifting a sub to Kiwi for your eleventh total. Look at that. Oh. Legends supporting legends right there. Wow, we um, love that from yeah. Daisy. Thank you, Daisy. Um, no more ads for Kiwi. <laughs> so, <sighs> Aqua and Ven. I mean, I guess the core of that really in BBS is like Aqua as the protector, as the, you know, um, to a degree a bit patronizing. Um, you know, not letting Ven go out and explore. But Ven doesn't take most of that to heart throughout, um, you know, that midpoint of BBS. Like, you know, Aqua is like letting him know in Radiant Garden, like, I'm trying to protect you. Like, it's dangerous out here. You need to go home. Um, I'm just looking out for you. And then Ven has the gall in the next scene or two to say, it must be nice knowing who your friends are. And at the end of Disney Town, he says, I wish someone was looking out for me. Like, how fucking dare you? Um, so... I mean, it's a relationship, but it's not one that I'm particularly having fun watching. Um, no. But I, I do think there's, you know, probably a higher degree of depth, um, more than even than Soren Roxas, maybe, if I may be so bold. Um, there are more moments. <laughs> wow, that is truly bold. How it's pretty you bold. Live with yourself? I, I, I just think, like, you get more moments of them talking to each other when they're not data. Um, I'm fucking with you. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Um, no, you're good. You're I mean, good. like, just because the stakes are so high here. Yeah, right. they're so high in this yes. cage duo's bracket on the regular Pat Twitch channel. Um, I don't know. Is that is chat? Do you agree? Like, Aqua Ven over Sore Roxas? I actually do agree with that. For yeah. The <laughs> um, uh, I I don't think Sora and Roxas are the most interesting parts of each other's character. But where it's like we don't you not you don't have a ton to work with with the wayfinders, so it's like Aqua is a core part of Ven's character, and Ven is a core part of Aqua's. I know it's crazy to say that like because Sora and Roxas are the same guy. Like how could you say they're not a core part of each other's character? But like, you know, I, I just don't see it in, in the in the same way to the same degree. Um, Uma Sorbet says, sorry, Oma Sorbet says Roxas and Sora are so much more interesting. Um, I think on their own they are. I just think as a duo, as a unit. Um, I don't know. It's slim. Like it's not like Aqua and Ventus are like leagues ahead for me. Um, I'm not even sure what we're doing with this. Uh, and we're we're talking about this matchup that doesn't exist. But like Sora and Goofy versus Aqua and Ventus. What are we doing? Um, I mean, I think it's it's Sora and Goofy are a lot more interesting. Yeah, or, or fun to me. I mean, I I don't know. Like Aqua and Ventus. I, I don't really like. I don't really get the sense that that Ventus really likes Aqua that yeah. much, and <laughs> yeah. also like um, also Ventus. Uh, he um, I forgot what my train of thought was. Uh, well, let me let no, me uh, pivot to because uh, we have two messages about Storm Roxas, Homestuck official. Yeah. I know I'm not going to convince you to change the answer, but listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> the relationship is deep and interesting. It's just that a core part of it is the absence of the other person. No, you're right. And and to be honest, uh, I, I feel like maybe I was I was too low on that aspect of it. Like there's a sense of like you know something is is not right. Something is missing. Like a core part of a of a person. Um, but like. <laughs> I don't know. I like, remember what I was going to say. Okay, and I just want, I just want to pivot to Oma Sorba as well. Um, so much of Roxas' yeah, character yeah. relies on his relationship with Sora and how he's constantly denied his own personhood. And that, that dynamic is so interesting to me. Like, 
and now I'm now I'm like going back. Like, is it Roxas's relationship with Sora as a character, or like the fact that Sora exists? You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like, it's like, like I don't I don't see like a relationship between the two of them as people. It's like the relationship between Roxas and Roxas and the concept of another person existing. Like, right. it, like the fact that it's Sora um, doesn't do a ton for me, I guess. Yeah. Um, Sora barely fucking knows Roxas. Yeah, exactly, buffoon. Yeah. Like, Sora yeah. does not know this guy. Like, Roxas in Sora's memory and, and like, uh, in mind, like, is, like, kind of, like, taking a back seat. Like, I feel like, you know, it'd be nice to get Roxas back, but, like, I don't really know the guy. <laughs> you know? Like, I don't know. Maybe right. I'm being too reductive about this. What were you going to say about, uh... Uh, uh, yeah, Ventus, I don't really know how much he actually, like, likes Aqua, but it doesn't get to the point where it's actually, like, interesting tension. It's just kind of like a wet fart of, oh, yeah. she's <laughs> a person I, you know, spent a lot of time with and, you know, but it's kind of, again, kind of patronizing. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't really, you know, I prefer somebody else very clearly to her that i've spent the same yeah. amount of time with like right. he has such um, a clear preference but it never really comes out so uh <laughs> yeah so loudly that it's interesting so sorry yeah. goofy is i i prefer yeah okay uh three things here uh first i have a question from 11 minutes ago that i missed sorry from Revenfly, fly the creator of the trivia today did you release that ice cream video today to celebrate the trivia uh no but it was a very happy coincidence and we had a lot of fun with the trivia um and then frosty are we ever playing bbs tonight um i would like to assuming we, we get through this in a reasonable amount of time um but you know i'm not uh, i'm not gonna be uh, sad if we don't get to it at all um and then I think I'm gonna put it to a poll, Kiwi, just to make it interesting. Cause um, I'm, I'm not saying I hate the Sora and Goofy dynamic, but I think I like right. to see what happens with chat, and I think I do lean more Aqua and Ven. If anything, like there's not really a relationship like Aqua and Ven's, um, even if it's not that strong. Whereas Sora and Goofy, I don't think is that different from Sora and Donald. Obvi like obviously they butt heads more, uh, Sora and Donald, but um, yeah. better duo. Let's put this to a poll: Sora and Goofy, Aqua and Ven. Again, not going to be mad at uh, this going in either direction, but I think to add some spice to it all. Um, Sora realizing that he unknowingly caused the death of Roxas and the denial of his personhood and then doing everything in his power to fix what happened. No, I agree. I agree with that. But I, I just say, like, if it was... I think Sora would feel that about anybody. You know what I mean? Uh, it could have been anybody. Whereas, um, I don't know, I, I, maybe I, I lost my train of thought there. But, like, I, I just don't think... I don't think it being Roxas is uh, a core part of that um, relationship. Like, it could have been anybody. Um, Sora's just like that. Um, like, do you think, yeah, do you think Roxas and Sora are going to hang? Maybe. I doubt it. Um, That's an I, interesting point. Uh, yeah. That, like, it doesn't really matter that it's, uh, that it's Roxas. He kind of does that type of treatment for everyone. Yeah. He's, he's always looking out and trying to save everyone that's just kind of the character hmm. Sora and goofy's not relying on that though he's not trying to save goofy they're you know they've got a different dynamic completely that's actually different than than Sora's usual dick yeah uh, he's not ever trying to save them it's right it's its own thing yeah no yeah and i i love roxas too i i think he's one of the you know one of my more well-liked characters um so I don't blame you for coming about for him. Um, last one on the Roxas Sora thing. When Hiros talks about Tadashi and San Fran, Sora sees Roxas, which tells me that Sora sees Roxas in the same way. Uh, well, no, because doesn't he doesn't Sora Sora it becomes Roxas in that moment for a sec, and then right? Yes. Like he like has a moment where, um, like we see him as Roxas, and then the other Big Hero Six members yeah. are HPO. Um, and, and unless I misunderstand, yeah. right, <laughs> right, right. Uh, who won? Who won the poll? Sora and Goofy. Okay, it was actually a blowout, so we're, we're moving Sora and Goofy along. Okay. Good. Um, good. Good. All right. Let's see. Roxas and Axel versus Sora and Leon. Well, we can just uh, probably <laughs> advance that. Um, what about Leon and Roof Leon? God, Roof Leon. Yeah, if it was Leon and the Roof, that would be very strong. Name a more iconic duo than that. Um, Sora and Leon. That's probably the the uh, flimsiest one so far, right? Maybe it's besides... I feel, actually, Zaldan Beast is probably stronger than Sora and Leon. I think Sora and Leon peak in one, um, and even that yeah. is, you know, you get Traverse Town, and then at the very end in Hollow Bastion. Um, even in two, like, 
I guess there's like, you know, the sense of familiarity there, but he kind of has that with everybody in Raiding Garden at that point. Like, they're just kind of like, you know, bros. Um, Leon's, I guess, something of a mentor to Sora um, in those early goings. He kind of also functions as that in uh, Chain of Memories. Um, again, Rox is an ox, so we can probably save heavier discussion for later just to keep this uh, not so front loaded. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I have to say about Sora and Leon is that I, I really love every scene that they have together. I think it's always fun. Leon's always yeah. very fun for me. I, I think he's <laughs> definitely my favorite of the Final Fantasy characters that, uh, yeah. that have appeared. Uh, I, um, I really yeah. enjoy him quite a bit. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, he he does kind of fill that uh, that meeting the mentor role and the hero's journey type of thing, which is a an interesting role for the uh, FF8 guy to kind of be playing there. Yeah, because yeah. He's not that old, and you would think right. that he'd be like an old fart, but yeah, you know, yeah, it's like actually said. like this cool dude. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's 25. Now it's, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For Roxas and Axel, uh, that's the move, though. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, again, we'll, we'll get to uh, more discussion about that later. Um keep this not yeah. so top heavy riku and ansem sod versus axel and shion um well for me it's it's pretty uh instinctually riku and ansem um mm. and i think they're <laughs> really you disagree i mean no, okay no, okay no. i'm just saying because of the scene that you like so much that's like um one of your yeah the death the, scene. uh yeah, the death scene. The Ansem death scene, um, when he talks to both Riku and the player. Um, yes. Axel and Shion obviously peaks with the uh, always be there to bring you back. But, like, I don't know. I played through Days again recently, and, uh, like, I don't really... Uh, I feel like they don't get along that much. Like, I feel like uh, Axel and Shion hanging out, like, you need Roxas there as the glue, you know? And that's yeah, probably right. a pretty obvious observation, but... Um, Axel's kind of mean to Xion for uh, that last stretch there. Like, between not, you know, only literally uh, karate chopping her in the neck and uh, the whole argument outside the mansion, which, again, very powerful moment. Um, like, she, uh, he talks shit to her um, in that one scene where they're... Um, what's that room where you grind the creepers for final form? And uh, You know what I'm <laughs> talking, talking about? Yeah. yeah, I think that's not the room. Skyway or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he's, like, such a dick to her. Um, yeah. and obviously that's, you know, I would rather there be tension than everything to be, uh, hunky-dory, but, uh, I just, I feel like you need Roxas there for really any, uh, degree of, of like, cohesion between them. Um, right. and Riku Ansem has such a history, um, even if they're not, I mean, I don't know, it's, it's not the, it's not the deepest thing ever, right, but Ansem is such a, a core part of, of Riku's development, um, uh, I don't know, am I being hypocritical? Like, does it have to be Ansem? Like, is there anything uniquely about Ansem that uh, pairs well with Riku? Um, uh, well, there's probably a, a thread back to Terra. They kind of right. have that in common going on. Uh, <laughs> they both have silver hair. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah. <laughs> just loving, loving myself. Yeah, here. yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. No, uh, I think it's, uh, you know, the most long-standing duo for the player, from the player's perspective, other than mm. Thor and Kyrie and Sora Sor and Riku. Riku. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. that's the one that kind of drives everything forward, Riku right. and Ansem, for the player, at least. Like, yeah. I said about the Terra and Xehanort one was kind of the one in-universe is the one that is kind of the, the, uh, the, the catapult for the action, but... Riku and Ansem for the player is kind of the the launching point for for everything, really. Um, um yeah, I agree. Um, just wanted to thank uh, Avad H Gray for the uh, two months there. Um, let me see that message there. I gotta scroll up quite a bit. Um, meaning sub for everyone. I'm stuck in a time zone that makes it hard to catch a stream. Dedicated VOD person finally showing up. We love that. We love the VOD people showing up in the live stream. Thank you so much. And uh, Zamon five eight one. Thank you for the follow. Um. Yeah, I wanted to uh, get on this point that Uma Sorbet made. Um, I like the Riku Ansem as an allegory for even how when you leave an abuser, their influence still follows you for a while, like how the harm they cause is hard to heal. Yeah, I mean, like, Ansem uh, enacts so much trauma onto Riku. Um, and it's great. I mean, it's, it's reflective of real life. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, a long-standing thing either. Like, they're... The time that Riku and Ansem uh, were, you know, interacting and, and one was very brief. Um, but it's such a driving force. Like, it really only is... Um, the second half of Hollow Bastion until 
you defeat Ansem at the end of the world. Like, that's really the extent of, like, Ansem enacting his will maliciously over Riku. Um, and then it is just, like, such a healing process um, throughout Chain of Memories and even through Dream Drop, um, too, obviously, when he literally, you know, takes on the guise of the person who right. caused him so much uh, trauma. Um, is that is that kind of... Um, it's... I don't know how to phrase this. Like, there's a wrinkle there when, at the end of 3... And again, maybe reflective of real life that uh, you know people are having people have trouble like untangling the emotion there. And Riku is like weirdly like even though you were like such like a fucking bastard to me, like there are parts of it like where I like I appreciated you, like I respected you in a way, like they respect each other's strength. Um, and he says like he's gonna miss him, like it's fucked up, you know. Um, maybe we're reading too hard into that, but like it's it's kind of a maybe it's one of the like the, the deeper relationships on the bracket. I don't know. Um, it's uh, weird, it's, but yeah. I think it's really strong. Like yeah. I, like I would have it probably higher than a four seed, and I, I like these mm. seeds so far. But yeah. like, just maybe just three because or two. of how much history there is there too. And now that I'm seeing the the allegory that was mentioned, that's a very interesting perspective. That yeah. that. It's so right that it almost feels intentional. Uh, yeah, and it makes you wonder, like, is it? And it doesn't matter because you know right. we're not going to like sure. get caught on the authorial intent. It's just a very uh, right. I think it's uh, an easy reading to to uh, kind of get on board with. It, it's not. Yeah. There's not a ton of stretches like you might uh, come up with for some of these other ones. And um, Axel and Shion are a very like real type of relationship that yeah. you know you see very often of like the the friend of my friend uh you know they're they're kind of one degree of separation or two degrees of separation <laughs> at all yeah, times right. uh, uh so it's um <clears throat> yeah it's it's a very real type of scenario where mm. like you know you're not always going to be best friends with like your your best friend's other best friend <laughs> yeah yeah, uh, exactly. Riku and Ansem, by comparison, is uh, is also very real. This is the worst possible matchup for Axel and Shion. Yeah, it's, it's pretty tough. The other one that really, uh, <laughs> that really is 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 honest that way. So yeah, I'd go um, with Riku and Ansem. Two things, Frosty. Thank you for gifting a sub to Zimone five eight one. That's going to be four forty five from uh, Frosty total. Thank you so much. And Vaga says, Shion is the coworker you have to be nice to in work, but would never talk to you outside of the work setting. That's yeah. brutal. Um, I mean, I think that's how Axel sees it. Um, actually, yeah, to go back to that that not Skyway scene, when because uh, I, I remember I just watched it, when Shion runs up to him, she's like, Axel, and he turns around and he goes, oh, did you need something? It's not like, oh, hey, what's going on, Shion? And he's like, what do you want? Like, is this, does this have to do with the mission? Like, what's happening? Why are you talking to me uh, outside of the clock tower without Roxas? Like, this is weird. Um, all right, so we'll, we'll advance Riku Ansem. I think that's uh, pretty solid. Yeah. Um, Ventus Vanitas, three seed. Maleficent Pete, uh, six seed. Um, <laughs> speaking of uh, abuse and abusers, I think Maleficent and Pete is like the, the story of like... Uh, like Riku is the, is the success story of, of leaving the abuser, whereas Pete, uh, I do think it's coming. By the way, like I do think this happens where Pete will abandon Maleficent and uh, redeem himself. I think Egg of Dog would also love to hear that. I think that's where it's going to go. Unironically, within the next, within the next two games, <laughs> I'm putting my flag in here. Pete will abandon Maleficent. Um, what I do you like think of that? that? I like that. Yeah. I like that for Pete. Yeah, Maleficent's an asshole. Yeah, and I think he deserves um... it. I think he puts up with so much shit, and for what? Um, I think he can atone, like Vexen, for, uh, really all he did was threaten to, uh, uh, steal the election, I guess. I guess that's kind of a big deal, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I, I, it looked like we talked about last stream that maybe he was going to grab Minnie's head in that moment when he really, uh, stormed the stage. But, like, you know, I think he can come out and apologize and get back into the, uh, the Disney Town crew. Um, well, he was, uh, he was, you know, a curmudgeon, but was generally cool with everybody back in the Timeless River yeah. era, right? Yeah, he was grumpy, but, like, uh, you know, he was uh, a well-to-do citizen of the river. Um, I don't think he's uh, intrinsically a bad guy like Maleficent is, you know? Yes. Maleficent, Maleficent was born evil. is straight up evil. Yeah. yeah. And she's had he her moments, too. Just, uh... <laughs> But right, Maleficent uh, had some redeeming. Yeah, she sacrificed herself life. halfway, I guess. Yeah. Um, she fought the. Uh... Is Maleficent's best game cage too? Uh, probably. Yeah, uh, but no, it, uh, I mean, one, right? yeah, it's like it's probably one. one. 
it's one in terms of like being imposing and like a figure to be reckoned with but like she has like more interesting moments in two um, yeah. she's, she's just the figurehead in one and maybe this is sacrilege of me as a KH1 guy but like she's probably more fun to watch in two she's more intimidating in one obviously but um, well there's it's like kind of entertaining to watch how pathetic she becomes by two you know, yeah, like yeah how, I guess that's part of it class yeah. she is yeah to uh, the organization yo shipping Maleficent and Chernabog that's uh that's canon to uh, House, House of Villains. House yeah. DC villains. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love your work. I love how we both went to the same place. Yeah. Place yeah. Because it's great. It's our house now. <laughs> oh, I need to watch that for a fucking cheap, cool video. Um, Damn. Anyway, wait. I saw I saw a comment. Um, it was. Uh, I saw Sleaze. San yeah, Santa Harless. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm totally wrong. It's KH1. I forgot about Santa Harless. That's so pathetic. Um, yeah, definitely KH1 Maleficent. I take it all back. Um, sorry, we have like totally uh, like disregarded Ventus and Vanitas. Um, so this is like you know uh, quintessential light versus darkness boiled down into people throughout the series, right? Like I feel like they are yep. the representatives, um, and I would say their most interesting interaction is probably Vanitas's death scene. Do you think? Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is probably. weird because obviously that's not you know you would think it'd be BBS, but like I don't really. I'm just trying to think about like any other moments they have in BBS. Like you have him taunting him about the Keyblade on Destiny Islands. Um, right. You know, Ven uh, being gaslit by him and uh, how Terra is going to abandon him and everything and land a departure. Um, oh, you forget about uh, it's always about your friends, isn't it? At least I have some. Yeah, that's really good. Oh, that's a sick bird. Got him. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, I I kind of want to see what Vanitas's origin story is before I <laughs> right I uh, I pick that I I actually kind of like Maleficent and Pete just off the top of my head here. I like, kind of like it too. Uh, it feels yeah. wrong. Um, I like Vanitas more on his own than anything he has to do with Ven. Because um, Vanitas acts towards Ven pretty much the same way he acts towards anybody, which is, I'm a dick and I hate you. He's you just suck. a quippy asshole. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, He's like the Marvel villain. Um, right. I, I don't know. I mean, then again, it, maybe we're sleeping on the weight of like, you know, Ven is, um, you know, uh, an ancient uh, figure, a primordial being like Vanitas is. Uh, you know, we could assume that Vanitas is, um, you know, tied to the original darknesses from Union Cross times. Um, but like, I don't know. Am I that interested by that? Not really. Not that I'm like super invested in Maleficent and Pete. Um, but if we're going back to like the entertainment, uh, you know, quota here. Yeah. Um, I might just advance Maleficent and Pete? Should we put it to a poll, though? I don't know. Like, I think if we agree, like, yeah. you know, fuck democracy. If we yeah. agree, then... Chat, how much... I just want to I just want to say, I think I am going to advance Maleficent and Pete, but how much do you hate it? Does anyone hate it? Maybe people like it. Um, uh, Ventus and Venetus. I think I like... Uh, Aqua and Vanitas' scenes better together. Uh, you freak. You got you freak, yeah. You got um, several boss fights between them. Um, you get uh, Neverland, uh, Radiant Garden, Land of Departure. How about in, uh, in uh, Land of Departure in Cage 3 when uh, Aqua tells uh, SCG to fuck off because she's yeah. going to handle this? Like, yeah. That's fun, right? Got my twerp like, stomping she really on. has a beef against this guy uh, yeah um but uh maleficent and pete though i think how about a uh, lot more fun you better settle down there master that's yeah. so good all right i, I think i'm gonna advance maleficent and pete though um i yeah. guess I, i'm putting a lot of stock in my you know completely um made up uh head cannon that pete will you know uh abandon her and it'll be a really satisfying moment but um, even if he doesn't they're still kind of funny yeah so that's fun and team i think rocket. they're more iconic yeah team rocket all right sora and donald versus Riku and Ansem the Wise. Um, that's kind of like frame one Sora and Donald for me, actually. Um, I, I don't care at yeah. all about Riku and Ansem the Wise. Especially because Ansem the Wise can't even pronounce his name right. Um, how, how close can they really be? Um, he calls him Riku. So, really? Yeah. Remember in, uh, <laughs> um, when he's dying, Ansem the Wise, at uh, uh, Cage oh, 2? wow. He says it really weird. That's like an yeah, ongoing thing. Um, Raikou. Oh, Christopher Lee. Yeah. 
Raiko, you know what to do. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. Raiko. <laughs> like, the legendary dog from Gold and Silver? The, the third best legendary, the legendary dog. dog. Yeah. Is that not, like, the most consensus thing ever, that Raiku is the worst of the three legendary dogs? Yeah, that, uh, that needs... I don't know if I could hang out with somebody who does not yeah. believe that to be true. Yeah, that's really tough. Like, I've, I don't think uh, I've ever met a Raiku over Suikunu Entei person. Suikun's the fucking go, and Entei See, I'm an, is... I'm an Entei guy, but I respect Suikun. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, Entei is fantastic. And Raikou didn't get a movie, that's a good point. Yeah, the other two got a movie. Yeah. Entei got it first. They knew. Um, Dude, he was, he Suikun voice. and Celebi, those are my... Those are my <laughs> <laughs> fucking voice right there. Love my fucking them. squad, yeah. The yeah. Crystal Squad. Um, uh, yeah, this is Soren Donald. Yeah. Why are we... Why is Riku and Ansem the Wise even on here? I mean, they spend a lot of time together in, like, the two prologue. Like, if we're not seeing the, you know, simulated town, oh, we're seeing them. Oh, right. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I kind of forgot. <laughs> you forgot about the best part of the game. The beginning. Yeah. That's not the best part. It's one of them. The middle is, is really good. The middle is the best part. And the end is really good. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's always good to yeah. get back into old habits, you know? Well, because it's like hardly even Riku, you know? Like, it's... Yeah, true. It's actually Ansem Seeker of Darkness and Diz. Like, that's really what they spend uh, their time as with each other. Right. That's kind of why I just didn't even acknowledge it, because... I mean, I mean, it doesn't even really feel like Riku himself in right. the Wise. Like, yeah. yeah like, it, Riku was never really himself for an extended period of time, like, with Dance of the Wise. Like, he stopped in the the mansion a few times, I think. Like, oh, I guess like, Castle Oblivion is when they actually meet when uh, Riku's with Mickey. But that's, like, two right. scenes. You got the Road to Dawn, but that could have been any person standing in the middle saying that shit, so... Yeah. Um, this, yeah, this is just a no. I, yeah, I know. It's Sora and Donald. Very. Uh, somebody said they're just coworkers, um, which is funny because, like, you know, the Sea Salt Trio literally are just coworkers, but they obviously have a more uh, profound relationship than uh, Riku and Ansem, who are not bound by an organization, but are just kind is of. Is days an allegory for two corporations fighting against each other? Ansem the Wise, Riku and Nominee oh, are man. on one side. Ansem and the Wise Nori. attempting a hostile buyout. Yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, it has to be. I'm going to yeah. purchase the organization for six billion dollars. Yep. It's way That's it. uh yeah. Alright. Okay. We got Axel and Saix versus Sor and Pooh. That's sad because I think Sor and Pooh in a different spot could have done well against some other matchups. But uh Yeah. I just think uh one scene alone of Axel and Saix and Days uh talking like before your mission and they're just like anytime Axel or Saix are alone in a hallway, you're gonna get some fucking awesome shit. Um like, I, I have all these scenes, you know, in all these days and in my upcoming video, uh, really highly ranked. Um, Axel and Sykes is so good. <laughs> just just from the intrigue of it all. Like, even if it's not that deep of a, of a relationship, we haven't actually seen them, you know, be uh, cordial or... Not that that even matters, obviously. We have uh, protagonists and antagonists uh, doing well in these so far. But um, I just think, like, based on sheer intrigue and, like you know, filling in the gaps of what their relationship has been like and their their secret plot and the, the subject X of it all. Now, like, there's just so much intrigue injected into that for me moving forward, even. Um, well, what about their more innocent times? What about memories? Yeah, yeah you got you got uh, Lee and Issa, obviously. Great scene, my favorite scene. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'll, like, that, that part of the scene, like, um, the, the Issa and Lee relationship is not so much as uh, a sticking point for me as like Lee explaining his philosophy and um, his you know interactions with Ven. Um, obviously, like Issa has a fucking killer one-liner with the lame loser laughable. Um, it really is striking though to get to see them um, in BBS and look at them you know by the end of days like how uh, fractured that has become. Um, kind of sad on a, on a replay. Yeah, the K3 well, clock tower scene. Yeah, that's a great moment. You it's can't use all that. <laughs> that we actually get to see it, though, right? Because mm -hmm. like that's one of those moments where, like, in You're another right. universe, <laughs> we'd say, "Oh man, like it would have been awesome to see when they actually were friends." But like right. they actually took the opportunity to do it in yeah. this case, yeah. Uh, and I appreciate that that was like acknowledged at all, and it yeah, makes sure. those scenes like the Cage Three Clock Tower scene when Sykes dies, when they, you know, get together again, like at the the clock tower and the. The montage of all of the the groups getting back together, getting yeah. to Cage Three, and uh, it makes it all uh, 
it makes it all so much better because we had that contextual scene in, in Birth by Sleep of right. when they were truly friends and nobody doubts it and there was only like light ribbing and not like yeah. actual animosity right right, right. Uh, it makes everything so much deeper and especially because it's a great scene too yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just kind of a throwaway scene or you saw them in the background it's like okay well you know we saw it but whatever but it helps that the scene is just you know kick ass it's it's both of our favorite scenes yeah uh, yeah so yeah it's great uh but sykes did not deserve that beach invite until he apologized to roxas and Shion. yeah like <laughs> this is kind that's of a, what was off screen <laughs> yeah that's that's another off screen moment that we should have gotten um yeah like it's so weird that we in cage three and i love cage three but it's, it's it's a big miss that we get and maybe this we can get this at some later date but the fact that we get to see ienzo apologize to ansem the wise but not Saix to roxas and shion like is that not kind of bonkers you know yeah, especially not, if you're gonna put them on the clock tower at the end and on the beach like i think we need that um but anyway, not to, uh, you know, completely sideline Sora and Pooh. It's one of the most um, innocent and, you know, um, like cute relationships throughout this entire bracket so far. Um, and there is something <laughs> of an arc there. Um, again, it, it probably could be Sora in any of the, uh, you know, obviously Sora is most connected to Pooh out of everybody in the 100 Acre Wood. But getting to see, um, you know, Pooh forget about him in two and then in three, like there is like this moment that they... You know, they step aside and acknowledge how Sora's connection with him is weaker. You could be like, uh, you know, a reflection of the trauma that Sora has endured and like his, his detachment from the more childlike uh, portions of his adventures. Like, it's uh, it's fun stuff. You know, it's it's, it's one a of the crazy best. Moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty crazy, and it's uh, I would say, besides Donald and Goofy, um, and I guess Mickey or whatever. I guess uh, a one world only Disney character is that not the strongest one that Sora has with another character? I was just gonna say that. Yeah, I think it really is. Yes, it seems like that would be a relatively popular opinion too. Yeah, I, I think uh, it has to be one where he sees them more like, than once. Like a, you can't, you know, really like I know people like Sora Rapunzel, but I don't think that's you know there's enough there just because they splashed and uh, did dandelions. So yeah, I mean, I think maybe like. Sora and Hercules is pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's good. Like, it it really doesn't exist in, in KH1. So, it kind of gets off to a slower start. Sora and Pooh are, are kind of friends throughout the whole thing. I mean, I'll uh, even give I'll even give Sora and Herc some credit for, like, you know, the post-Hercules uh, Cup scene where Sora's like, you know, here's, like, this fucking pinnacle of strength, like, this guy that we've been looking up to since he saved the day with Cerberus, you know, at least in the context of playing KH1, like, we were presented to him very early if you're going in conventional order and then like you you manage to like work your way up the ranks and like take this guy down like i feel like having him is kind of like a like a milestone or like a, mm. a, a bit of a of a inspirational like i'm trying to get to this guy's heights like i like that and then right you know sora continues to learn um through him with the like the self-sacrifice thing which i guess you could even say is a, an echo of soren kairi when herc saves meg later on um sure. there's like a bit of a connective tissue there and then you know him going right to her for advice at the at the beginning of three like that's that's really fun um, yeah like that it's kind of well known that they're boys right like yeah yeah for sure Sid kind of knows this yeah <laughs> that's um, funny um but yeah i think um sora and Pooh definitely uh i think outclassing the other sora and one-time party member or one-time disney world relationships um so that's you know not nothing yeah all right Moving along, Tara and Ven versus Riku and Mickey. Um, I'm actually going Riku and Mickey pretty immediately, um, especially in a post-busting myth video world where I'm not as uh, a curmudgeon about Mickey. Um, that's like a frame one for me too. Like I feel like that's pretty easy. And I'm not to again not to downplay Tara and Ven, um, but they do spend less time together. There's less uh, less bonding. Um, you get flashback scenes. I think that's like the core of the Terra and Ven relationship, or the the couple of flashbacks we get. And they're you know they're like blinking, you miss it. Um, Riku and Mickey, the core of that really starts up in Calm. Um, yeah. You know, continues out through Days and Three. Um, Even the end of KH One, right? Yeah, yeah. At the very yeah, especially uh, the final mix version where we get the sure. off-screen Mickey white text. Yep. Um, yeah, it's the best Wayfinder d dynamic versus the funniest pairing ever that somehow is taken seriously. Um, you yeah, know, I, uh, 
I did. I really like the the camaraderie that Riku and Mickey have with each other. I, I think Mickey's a little overprotective of him, like when he runs after him and uh, what is that? The end of uh, Melmem. Um, right. Like, yes. all right, simmer down. Like Riku can handle it. Um, let him go. But uh, you know, it's just a very. It's it's the. Uh, it's not like a novel um, uh, observation, but it's like the Sora, Donald, and Goofy, but the the other side of it. You know, Riku's got Mickey, Sora's got Donald and Goofy, and they're just like yes. kind of they're bros. You know. It's hard to take Correct. seriously, but it's it's fun. Um, uh, are Terra, Ventus, and Aqua better individually than they are with one another? Um, yeah, I think so. I think they might be. Like, they're almost more interesting when they have to interact with the other characters than they are when they interact with each other. Something about those voices or something mixing just doesn't quite work. Like, yeah. Riku and Terra talking, like, in the... And the, the tornado uh, and cage three. Yeah, right. Like that somehow hits yeah. so much harder than like pretty much anything that that any of the uh, trio combinations uh, have going on. Yeah, I mean, I feel like most uh, like are Axel, Roxas, and Shion stronger as individuals than they are as a trio. Uh, I don't know. Probably about not, that. right? Probably not. I was just I wasn't uh proposing one way or the other. I was sure, just asking. Sure. I, I think yeah. uh and Soriku and Kyrie, are they more interesting as individuals? That's tough uh, too for me. I think Sora Riku, and Riku Yes. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I think Riku is more interesting as an individual. Uh I think Sora. I think Sora is kind of anchored to Riku. I mean, not so much for three, but basically, you know, every other game. Um, right. And then I don't even know where to begin with Kyrie. That's tough. Well, yeah, <laughs> um, I think we're thinking like the same way that Riku yeah. probably is more interesting away from that trio, but Sora and Kyrie are, are better when they are <laughs> yeah. in that trio. From yeah. what we've seen, I mean, I don't know where it's going, obviously, but like from well, yeah, from like I'm I'm, I'm way more interested in Riku on his own than Sora on his own or Kyrie on her own. Um, yes, but pairing a couple of those up is, is definitely more interesting. All right, again, we're getting into <laughs> hypotheticals that aren't even on the bracket. Right. Uh, all Riku right, so and Mickey, though, Riku, and Mickey, yeah, I'm fine with that, and I don't even hate Terran Venn. I think it's probably like Buffoon said, the strongest of the Wayfinder pairings, but um, they kind of got a raw deal here. Even though this was was this our first. No, we had Riku Ansem, or sorry, Maleficent and Pete beat uh, Ventus Vanitas. That was our second uh, lower seed being the higher seed. All right, Riku and Kyrie versus Roxas and Hainer. Uh, <laughs> well, it'll, it'll be Riku and Kyrie for me, but even that I don't find uh, particularly uh, strong. Um, is Riku Kyrie the weakest pairing out of the Destiny trio? It gotta be, right? Yeah, and I actually think I want this to go to a poll. Yeah, you want Roxas and Hainer? Yeah, because I think, like, Roxas and Hayner have kind of a fun camaraderie friendship in that, uh, in the simulated Twilight Town. And, yeah. and Hayner, like, really seems to be, like, in the weeds on the Finding Roxas thing. Like, he's really interested in all of that with his, you know, with Pence and Olette. But, I mean, I don't know what's, like, especially unique about Roxas and Hayner that, like, is not there with Roxas and Hainer and Pensinolette. Like, right. you know, I, I mean, other than that, they kind of, well, they fight each other in the struggle tournament and yeah. there's like that, like that very, very small scale tension between them. But like, still that almost is like more charming to me because of yeah. maybe where it happens. Like, like as the world is crumbling and Roxas is about to like lose his existence, like we also have time for like it's this like town rivalry here yeah like, yeah Hainer gets so sad when cypher uh when he thinks that rox is hanging out with cypher yeah he hates <laughs> it uh and then i mean riku and kairi like they, they really don't like interact with each other very much kh1 at all is at the strongest much. yeah and i think it kind of goes back to like my perspective on Sora and Roxas as a duo is that like riku and kairi like they they like there's obviously you know a history and and uh you know connection there but it's really more so about Kyrie as like a goal for riku as opposed to like their interactions as as characters um but yeah when that's the peak of it like what is the best riku and Kyrie moment it's probably one i mean could you even say it's from one He's though because for it. right i was he gonna say like for it. is it 
is it like that's not great like is it one scene even it's more so like the the building of like maleficent's kind of leading riku along to like all right if you help us out we can get Kyrie. like you know she shows him the projection of her and she's on the on captain hook's ship and like but you know it just feels like a goal um to him um i mean I it, like it's when riku gives Kyrie the keyblade yeah and he does that as fucking ansem <laughs> you know right. it's like yeah. what even is the moment like what is the moment it's like uh, and Possibly like that <laughs> yeah and the what we left off on with them was not particularly strong it was them in uh the final world um you know riku i mean Kyrie, you know volunteers to go home and riku is you know along with that but um he's on the same page as her i don't love that um i don't see much of a obviously i don't see a ton of future for rockus and hainer as a duo either um, I don't see a ton for Riku and Kyrie moving forward. Stop joking around, your man. We got a joke, which is kind of sad. That that like the fact that we think that there might be as much interaction for Roxas and Hainer as there will be for yeah. Riku and Kyrie is pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, really quick, Kiwi, I have a joke from uh, from Ali. Um, what did yeah. one shirt say to the other? Um, what did one shirt say to the other? Shirts have sleeves, uh, collars, buttons. Um, Meet me at the clothesline. It's where I hang out. Fuck! <laughs> well done. Well done, Ali. Wow. Uh, good job. Um, nicely, nicely done. <laughs> well, we'll put this to a poll. I I think even outside... and not to, I don't uh, hate the Roxas and Hainer stuff. I feel like it is kind of like... Uh, you know, what you get from the Cage 2 tutorial with Roxas and Hainer, it would have been nice to get that amount of content for Sora and Riku in KH1. Because as much as I love KH1, like I do feel like the the prologue could have been made a bit stronger, maybe a little bit longer, by just having a couple more scenes with the three of them. Um, they pull it off better than the Wayfinders in BBS, but I just wish we could have seen a bit more of them in one before the, uh, everything hit the fan. Um, so vote on Riku and Kairi, or Roxas and Data Hainer. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the real Roxas and Hainer have interacted by this point, but very yes. briefly, and with... Uh, no words, right? That's, is that entirely the beach scene where the, the two real versions of them interact? Well, on the clock tower. Oh, that. right. Of course, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Both KH3 uh, set to uh, I don't think twice. That's when all those interactions happen between the real ones. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Roxas and uh, Roxas met the real Hainer in days, which I just played. I should have remembered that. Um, they, uh, they do the uh, grandstander. So that's kind of fun. Mm. Um, but uh, looks like Riku and Kyrie are going to proceed there. Yeah. Um, so we'll move that along. That's fine. That's fine. Yep. Uh, Roxas and Shion, we're finally at the end of round one, folks. And everyone's like, oh, is, uh, of course, we're here forever. The first round is always long. We've done how many brackets? The first round is always like fucking two hours. And then we get through the rest of it in like 15 minutes okay yeah roxas and shion rika and rika replica um uh <laughs> i feel like it's actually closer than uh i i'd care to admit um yeah it is, it is i know people hate rika replica i don't hate rika replica um I. I know his name like is rika replica yeah i kind of like him um like, I'm more interested in Shion on her own than Rika Replica on his own. Um, Roxas and Shion. Uh, I don't even know where to begin with this. I, I feel like I should have something to say because I've just played Days, but I feel like it's almost... I, it's, I'm oversaturated with it right now. I'm trying to, like, uh, think of the moments where it's just those two. And they do spend a good chunk of time together because Axel goes off on two separate occasions uh, for an extended amount of time. Um, That's a stick. Yeah. Shion is Sora's memories of Kairi brought to uh, human form. Um, that's the basis of everything. I'm trying to think about how I feel about that in terms of them interacting. Um, like, what is the relationship there that sets that apart? I mean, obviously, like, they both have the Keyblade. There, there's the connective tissue of, like, you know, Shion takes strength away from Roxas. Um... And that's like the driving force towards the end of days. Um, I don't know. I just feel like I really like all of them together as a trio, unless so as duos. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, there's, 
I, I like that Roxas found a little friend for himself while Axel was gone and he thought yeah. he was dead. That That's he, very nice. he kind of was able to adapt and, and have another another little friend to play with was yeah. nice and that they uh, that they were sapping energy from each other uh, is very uh, is very interesting. There could yeah. only be one. Uh, so like this outside tension that like they didn't ask for or even know was happening, but yeah. like everybody kind of crafted this uh, this rivalry between them, like from the outside is, is kind of interesting. Right. Uh, I am a big defender of the who else will I ice cream with line. So yeah. point <laughs> yeah. for that. Right, right. And Roxas, that's a stick. I mean, what the fuck Great. do you want? Great Jeez. stuff, yeah. Um, yeah, like... <sighs> It should be Roxas and Shion. I'm just, uh, I'm not like, I'm not super impressed, I guess. Like, I feel like I should be more impressed by this duo, and I'm, I don't know. Um, I don't hate Riku Riku Replica. I, uh, I'm one of the people who likes that Repliku came back in three. Um, I think probably best Riku and Riku Replica moment is his death scene in Calm, actually, over yeah. the three one. Um, yeah, that's great. Riku replica laying on the ground and being like, "Yeah, where do I go?" And Riku's like, "Hopefully, we all go to the the sparkly thing that Zeno and Erika's go to." Yep. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll advance. I mean, are you gonna advance Roxas and Shion? I guess that's where I'm leaning. Yes. Okay, we'll do that. Where's my heart gonna go? And it felt too the close for me for a two seven. Um, yeah. That's all I have to say on that. All right. I promise we'll get through these quicker. Sora and Riku versus Roxas and Nominee. It's Sora and Riku, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> not, not a ton else to say on that. Uh, Ericus yeah, and Xehanort versus... I've exhausted that conversation before. Yeah. This is why it goes fast now. This right, right. Um, Ericus and Xehanort versus Terra and Aqua. I mean, I know I was not picking Ericus and Xehanort the first time, but yeah. I think I kind of want that one now. I also uh, go for that. Yeah, yeah. Ericus and Xehanort. Um, yeah. There's just more there. The more yeah. we've talked about the the wayfinder, the, uh, the wayfinder trio, the more down I am for that to go down. To yeah, where is Zayn? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, Sora and Kyrie versus Terra and Zaynor. We didn't really give Sora and Kyrie their dues in the first round because it was up against something uh, easy. It was uh, Zaldan and Beast. Um, <laughs> Sora and Kyrie. What's their best game? Is it one still? One. Yeah. Um, one is kind of like everybody's best game. Uh. If you're in one, you're probably at your best in one, unless you're, like, Riku or Sora. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Um, well, what's the best Sora Kyrie moment? Is it the self-sacrifice? And again, like, she's... Yeah. I guess maybe... I'm conscious for it. Maybe more so, if we're going to say the best moment, uh, like, for them two as a character, it's it's got to be her bringing him back, right? Uh, or may, Actually, no. It's the, uh, the promise. Um, and the... Uh, the waterway except for the yeah. moment where sora says Kyrie's gonna get in his way um that what sucks <laughs> but what about uh what about when they share the palpy crew i think it's fine um i don't think it hits the same as um the whole explanation of Kyrie being the light that brought sora back in kh1 like i, I still feel like that's like a stronger uh moment um, mm. I feel like the power push scene. I could have just it could that could have been something where you told me it happened off screen. I'd be like, fine, you know, <laughs> like uh, as the counter to all the things we wish we could have seen. Like I'm, I don't really care uh, about it. Like it's, you knew it was gonna happen. Um, I could have just imagined it. Like it doesn't really mean a ton to me. Uh, maybe it hit it harder harder for other people. For me, I I didn't really feel a ton for it. Um, but I like it a lot. It kind of fulfills the prophecy. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this has been drawn on the cave since 2002 um i don't you know i'm not saying it's bad i just uh maybe it just didn't hit super hard um i like the end of cage too when he says we're back and she that's says, great you're home yeah, yeah that's really nice yeah uh um, i think i know why but is there some kind of deeper reason why you don't like the you kind of just get in my way thing is it all just because it's kind of like a dick thing to say uh, yeah i mean I, I think it sets her up for like a series of being put on the back burner um okay. i feel like it's like this is the first moment that we establish where Kyrie is not being taken seriously as like a you know a, a chess player here um like i just feel like uh it's it's a sign of of wor worrisome things to come um yeah. 
And I mean, okay. you know, Sora's a 14-year-old boy. Like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give him a little bit of slack for it. But, yeah, obviously a 14-year-old boy didn't write it. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's realistic, I... at least. Like, you could see why he would say that. But, uh, you know, again, it, it's setting us up for a, a history of uh, Kyrie being kind of sidelined. So, Gotcha. Um, All makes sense. I, I just didn't know if it was like a regular Pat YT stream like thing. Or oh something. no, it wasn't. It wasn't a meme or anything. I think it's kind okay. of a, you know gotcha. more widespread thing. Uh, we'll yes, advance them though, right? Sense. That's you know, I don't hate Terran Xehanort, but it's going to be Sora and Kyrie over that. Hmm. No. Interesting. I don't know. You want to put you a poll? Uh, no, because the poll is going to say Sora and Kyrie. Okay, yeah, where is it prolonging the inevitable? Um, yeah, yes. Splash Splash is here, Bracket is still going. Uh, Splash, I would love to know the other 32, the uh, the forgotten 32. Um, maybe we could put that into its own bracket, because uh, a lot of the you know the big heavy hitters are represented here. Uh, I'm curious to see what didn't make the, uh, didn't make the cut. All right, Dom and Goofy versus Sora and Goofy. Well, that's pretty easily uh, Dom and Goofy. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Kind yeah, of funny that they yeah. met up in that way. Um, that is funny. Roxas and Axel versus Riku and Ansem S.O.D. Um, uh, I think I want to go I, Riku and Ansem. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. I, uh, and maybe it's just because we talked about it and I, I was really taken with our discussion on that today. But, uh, uh, I don't know. Again, like, I'm more, uh, I'm more into Roxas, Axel, and Shion as a trio than, than duos. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, are people gonna hate I, us? It, uh, that's okay. I mean, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Are we not thinking too deeply about this? Are we? Are we sleeping on Roxas and Axel? I mean, uh, it's a very flashy sort of thing, right? Like, it's maybe got more pizzazz. Like, this is the relationship that gives us you know the i'm so flattered moment like it's such a uh uh things get very passionate very quickly um in two between roxas and axel and their forgotten friendship um axel's so pissed off <laughs> that uh it's not the roxas that he once knew um right. and you know seeing all of the the gaps be filled in by playing days like that's you know it's satisfying um i don't know like my gut just wants to advance riku and ansem though yeah, I mean, I think Roxas and Axel is, like, really, really strong. It's it, really good. It would probably be in, like, my top four. Yeah. Just just uh, if it was in a different section of the bracket, but, I mean, that's um, not... Somebody's saying uh, that it's hard to split the trios into, into duos, and I feel like that's almost, like, part of it right now. It's like... yeah. Roxas and Axel, there's a missing piece there, though they are the most interesting portion of that trio. With Riku and Ansem, it's it's just them. Like yeah. they're it, that is the that is the combination. There's nothing missing there. Everything right, is, everything is there. Yeah. Everything's fully fleshed. There. Yeah, fully fleshed out. It is. Um, uh, yeah. Do Riku and Ansem fucking man? Yeah, I think so. Um, I want to uh, say, uh, almost Orbit says, I like how Roxas helps Axel break out of his mindset of taking over the organization at any cost. Um, I like that in theory. I just feel like that's not adequately um, explored in days. As I played through it, like I'm thinking about like how Axel meets Roxas, is very cordial and nice with him, and and very welcoming, and then he goes off and he. I guess switches a like or flips a switch and becomes like you know kind of a sociopath and murders two people and then he comes back and is basically the same way that he was like I wish and maybe it's talked about it probably is talked about in a report how I mean he actually says like oh uh, Roxas is rubbing off on me or I guess no Sora is rubbing off on me and I'm like more lighthearted now he says that on one of the uh, clock tower scenes um, but like. And even going back to, like, Axel's plot to take over the organization, like, I feel like he's not as into it as Saix is, you know? I don't get the, right. uh, I feel like Axel's just kind of like, yeah, whatever you say, I guess, like, I'm just here to chill. And Saix is like, good, keep keep doing that, like, this is all part of our big plan. Like, we don't really get to see any <laughs> moment of them being, like, you know, working together on that, um, outside of, like, them sneaking into the castle, and that was before they even knew what they were getting into. Um... So, I don't know. I wish they would have explored that a bit more in terms of, like, how Roxas kind of uh, thawed Axel in terms of uh, his demeanor. 
Um, yeah, I'm an advanced Rico Dance. I'm sorry. I know everyone's mad, but we like upsets. Yeah. Okay. Um, Maleficent and Pete. feels right. I don't know. Something about yeah. it feels right. So far. It does. Um, Maleficent and Pete versus Sora and Donald. Um, I'm going to go Sora and Donald. Um, we kind yeah. of uh, sidelined them as well, but I do think between Sora Goofy and Sora Donald, I prefer Sora and Donald um, just Same. in terms of uh, they butt heads more. It, it's more fun to have uh, little moments of squabbling. Um, yep. I guess that really only happens in like one, right? Um, deep you jungle. Get, like, deep jungle. <laughs> I mean, obviously they both abandoned him in Hall of Bastion, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's just more fun. I like the dynamic more. Maleficent doesn't know Pete's name. She never bothered to learn it. I think he, she does say it like twice, and every other time it's like, you oaf, you fool. Um, why Pete? Why Pete? Yeah. Perfect. yeah, it's it's very few and far between. Um, okay. Axel and Sykes versus Riku and Mickey. Um, Axel and Sykes. Yeah, same. <laughs> I, I don't hate Riku and Mickey. I just said that uh, I'm higher on it now than I've ever been. But uh, again, the intrigue with Axel and Sykes is huge for me. I love it. Um, Isn't Axel and Syx, like, to to go meta here, isn't yeah. it kind of, uh, isn't it kind of the closest relationship to regular Pat and Kiwi, too? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm the Axel? I'm, I'm not nearly, so. I'm not nearly cool this, enough to be the Axel. This, uh, this has been brought up before. The, the red uh, and blue, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, there's got to be a better pair than that. I think we're the slightly Good cubby. Day. Sorry, PJ. I know PJ wanted that. <laughs> PJ wanted to, we wanted to uh, go to a con and slightly and cubby together, but uh, oh, man. you can be, you could be uh, slightly. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't I can like do the, voice. the uh, I don't like the implications here. No, yeah, I can do the voice. That's the only thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Last of round two, Riku and Kairi versus Roxas and Shion. Okay, well, I know I just said that, like, <laughs> that, uh, the sea salt trio are better as a trio than as duos but even uh you know when we break one of them down into a duo i, I think it's better than riku and kairi um uh, i feel pretty solid on that like yeah it's it's fine with me yes. it's basically like what little you get of riku and kairi and kh1 up against all of days and uh it's gonna be rocks and Shion for me yes okay right round three let's get back up to the top here um, Sora and Riku versus Ericus and Xehanort. Sora and Riku. I don't think we need to uh, really explore that much more. Yeah. Um, I guess Ericus and Xehanort is like Sora and Riku if it if it went wrong. You know? That's yeah, really right. Nice. That's like a cautionary tale. Um, sure. A little glimpse into an alternate reality if uh, Riku strayed even further. Um, Alright, we got Sora Kyrie versus Don and Goofy. Um, you give it to Sora and Kyrie, I think, right? <laughs> And then it's going to go up against Sora uh, no. Riku and... No? Okay. No. You put you a poll? Yeah. Alright. I'm fine with it. I, I love Don and Goofy. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think Sora and Kairi is a huge emotional core. Um, and I don't I don't mind either of these winning, to be honest. Best duo. Sora and Kairi. Donald and Goofy. Didn't think these two would meet up. Um, Sora and Kairi barely interact. But when they do, it's usually pretty good, right? Right? Am I wrong? Or no? <laughs> no, you're right. But Donald and Goofy, I, I just feel like they don't miss. They just don't yeah. miss. I guess they don't they miss. They interact more. Yeah. Uh, I suppose the, the peaks are a little bit higher with Sora and Kyrie, but like Donald yeah. and Goofy are so Consistently good. solid together. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know what we're sleeping on? We haven't mentioned um, when uh, Sora and Kyrie are flying back to the graveyard. That's their best cage 3 moment. Or for me, it is. I like that more than the Pow Poo. I like Ky uh, Kyrie and Sora flying through the void and meeting back up with everybody in the graveyard. That's my favorite for them in that game. Yeah, it's good. I like the Pow Poo better, but I also yeah, like that sure. scene, yes. Um, what's, what's Pow Poo! Uh, Don and Goofy are winning. Look at that. Nice. Um, okay. We'll send it through. I I'm fine with it. I love that. I love Donald and Goofy. You won't catch me love slamming that. either of them. We love that. And it's Donald and Goofy as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. Riku and Ansem, SOD versus Sora and Donald. That's going to be Riku Ansem. Yes. Um, yes, it is. Kind of. How did Sora and Donald make it to round three? Oh, they were up against Levison and Pete. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then Axel Syx versus Roxas Shion. Uh, uh, I think it's Axel, Axel Syx. I know I kind of poo pooed Axel and Syx for a bit when I said, like, oh, we never got to see them be on the same page. Um, but again, like, 
just like the fucking excitement I feel in my bones when Axel is walking through hallway on his own in days and then Sykes comes into frame. Like I'm like, fuck yeah, like this is gonna be awesome. I fucking love it. When Sykes drops yeah. Lee on him for the first time, it's so good. And I'm just like pulling from scenes and maybe not so much the dynamic, but um even still, like I, I think the Axel and Sykes dynamic, like the really kind of uh you know more flamboyant more outgoing and more um erratic personality with the like the really grounded like by the books um you know he, sykes probably has like a fucking hell of a planner um <laughs> I, I just think like there's really like what is uh the next closest thing to that like i feel like that kind of scratches an itch in the series that you don't see anywhere else yeah. um like like i can't even really think of it's probably like one of the fucking foretellers or something it's probably like a set in era or some boring shit like that Wait, all right the loose cannon and the yeah uh, like loose cannon and like by the book cop you know well i mean um, i think tara knock was scratched that a little bit right i think the game wants us to think that but tara is not as loose uh, loose of a cannon as uh, he the is not as loose of a cannon so, no. um but some of the fandom some of the more regrettable corners of the fandom think he is so <laughs> yeah. that was scathing that felt scathing what i just said like the more regrettable corners of the fandom like what a fucking uh Avage, holy fucking <laughs> yeah. shit. what an indictment <laughs> uh, that came out way harsher than i wanted it to all right soren riku versus um we, we ran out of music i had the days ost um let me move over to something else as we finish up here um let's pull up uh fucking let's just do cage three ost um so we have some sound going in the background. I don't want the extended versions, nor do I want Face My Fears to play. Let's just start with, uh, let's start somewhere fun. Let's start with the little chef. There you go. That's, that's a fitting finale song. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sora Riku versus Donald and Goofy. Uh, I think I have to go Sora and Riku. I think I know where this bracket's going. I, can, I think I kind of always knew. Um, uh, 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 wrong, Isosceles. Do you remember in the garden when Donald cast Thundaga on Goofy? I think it was a Thundaga for the record. Um, what do you think, Kiwi? Yeah, I think a poll. Think a poll? Okay, you're you're really high yeah. on Donald and Goofy today. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm I like Donald and Goofy. Okay. <laughs> I I love them. I love both of these duos. They're both very strong. You know them. You love them. <clears throat> it's Donald and Goofy. Donald and Goofy higher highs in three than Sora and Riku in three. True. What? Sora and uh, Sora and Riku don't have as high of a high in three as Donald and Goofy do as a duo. Uh, they have a higher high, but they're again in three? like less consistent. I think in three, like what are they even doing? Well, I think that you don't believe that. I guess, but I think even fucking Donald and Goofy teaming up to take out Terranor might be stronger. <laughs> Maybe I'm being mm. too high on that. Uh, I had her on the floor. Uh, sorry. Um, best duo, Sora and Riku, Donald and Goofy. I mean, Don and Goofy are inseparable. Sora and Riku are not. Um, but that doesn't mean it's, you know, better. Uh, I'm just <laughs> just comparing them. Uh, it might be more interesting when characters are separated and have to uh, work without the other. Um, Star KTX, thank you for the 14 months. Holy shit, it's Star KTX. Appreciate that. Come on, Donald and Goofy gang, come on. <laughs> it's, it's pretty close so far. Um... Sora Riku is uh, in the lead here. It, the gap Yo, is closing. On, let's go. Let's gap go. is closing. <laughs> it's a two-vote gap right now. It's a one-vote gap. Go. Let's go. Kiwi really wants this. Again, I'm I'm fine with both of these. <laughs> I, I quite appreciate both of them. Uh, two-vote gap. We're gonna be we're gonna be letting this one run the whole time. I think. I should have turned on fucking like Forza finale or something. <laughs> the, little, the little Jeff is not uh, exactly fitting for this. this the little Jeff. That's what Kino calls it. I always make fun of him nice. for it. It's probably rude of me, but... Um, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> it's... All right, Sword Riku uh, kind of building a more sizable lead here. Uh, yeah. Cur currently 56 to 44. Um, Daisy Sorbet is back, coming back in time to vote for Don and Goofy. <laughs> uh, you want eternal moments, Vaka? Is that, does that show up in... It shows up in 3, but it's not going to be on the OST. Boom, boom. All right, I think it's kind of nail in the coffin now. Sword and Riku, yeah, I think 57. It's, I think it's happening. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Kiwi. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> it's all right. No, this is fine. This is yeah. fine. Sword and Riku are very strong, but like... I don't know. I just got I just got the vibes for Donald and Goofy right now. It's hard, yeah. to, it's hard to pull me away. 
<laughs> um, Riku and Ansem, this is our other Final Four matchup. Riku Ansem versus Axel Sykes, and I think even though it's, you know, a 3C difference, I think I'm going back to Ansem and, and Riku. Yeah, it's fine I'm with me. I'm just super taken with the discussion we had about them, so... Yes. Um, Alright, and I love Axel Sykes. Um, that was a 1C, too. Um, okay. Sora Riku versus Riku and Ansem. Uh... No, I said I was just really taken with that, but... Thor think, and Riku. Yeah, a Thor and Riku, is, it's just so fundamental. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously it sags in three, but, like, Riku and Ansem is, is kind of a non-quantity moving forward. Um, I, I would hope, at least. Um, right. I do think Riku and Ansem, maybe... Do they have a higher high in three as well? I guess it depends on, like... I, I love the death scene. I love the Riku and Ansem death scene. I, uh, you know, I'm also quite high on the you don't believe that moment but yeah um, it depends uh yeah it's i think it's got to be sword and riku though um yeah i guess we're not even putting it's, that to a vote we can do it just I'm out of not, curiosity I mean, but i mean yeah, I, I think people yeah. will go with sword and riku anyway well we'll just advance it i think that's uh you know i, I kind of said at the, at the top this was the uh, coronation of sorts um but i do think they are the strongest pair of two characters in the series um, not my favorite per Donald se, and but Goofy. other than Donald and Goofy, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you would have had it be Donald and Goofy versus Riku and Ansem. You were trying to set up for Riku and Ansem to take it. That was the the plot. That uh, was Kiwi no. saying or Actually, Gambit. I would have picked Donald and Goofy to win this. Whole really? Game. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> and honestly, like that's not it's not a terrible take. Like um, Donald and Goofy, Kingdom Hearts. Like it's uh, are they more iconic in another piece of media as a duo than Kingdom Hearts? No, like they are the duo what of Kingdom Hearts. Right. Like somebody put in one of your uh, somebody put in one of your comments about this bracket happening that like the series is known for trios. Yeah. So like to do a duos bracket's kind of interesting. Yeah, for sure. But there is like one duo that like you know is not broken apart. I mean, it's it's yeah. D and G. Yeah. That is. Uh, that is the fucking duo of Kingdom Hearts. Um, yeah, you know what? Uh, if this was Survivor, they'd win the the Sprint Fan Favorite Award. Donald and Goofy. They would they would take <laughs> home uh, like a hundred grand. Um, so I'm fine with that. We'll make them the fan favorites. Um, yeah. But uh, there you go, folks. That is the uh, Hamburger Splash submitted and Rom Som constructed Cage Duos bracket. Sora and Riku as our winners. Um, very, very happy with how this uh, shook out, just in terms of the discussions we got to have. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, so thank you. Everyone say thank you to Hamburger Splash and Rom Som for making this for us. And Kiwi, thanks, thank you for, for joining. Yeah. Oh, um, thanks for having me. It was me, good to get guys. back into the swing of things here. Yay. Um, am I going to play BBS after this? I guess. A little bit. I'd like to. Maybe we'll do an hour of BBS. Um, but I think I definitely need to pee, so... Um, Kiwi, you're welcome to stick around if you're into uh, Terra doing Mirage Arena to get the Xehanort reports, but if you also need to dip, I am, I'm fine with that too. Um, yeah, I think I, uh, I think I may dip. Okay, yeah, no worries, dip. no worries. Well, thank you so much for, for stopping in, dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a real one. Nice it's to been see a pledge. All my, it's nice to see all my old friends, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, all right. Bye, everybody. Love you. See you, Kiwi. Bye. <laughs> all right, folks. Oh, I got to turn off. You got a friend of me. <laughs> uh, all right, folks. Well, that's the bracket on the VOD here. Um, we're going to pick it up with just a bit of BBS tonight, I think, because uh, I did advertise you be doing that. Uh, Splash, thank you for the three months there. Um, I'm going to take a quick break and uh, grab a drink, uh, pee, and I'll be back and we'll do some uh, Terra BBS. Um, I can't do the final episode yet, which uh, Splash also corrected me on because I need the reports to do that. So we're going to be working on that after this. So uh, hang tight and see you bond people.